We are
Hello. Uh, hopefully you like that little bit of music. That was from um, our friend Mel I Am, who's a streamer here on Twitch and a musician. And uh, she's been writing some background music for us. Still haven't actually um, gotten the background music yet, but um, she said I also could play any of her music from the SoundCloud. So I've been using that sort of as our starting music for the last couple of weeks. Um, we are currently looking at some material that students collected on projects for my Lakes and Wetlands class. And um, uh, this sample was collected from the Wabash River. So uh, kind of an interesting uh, sample. Um, the Wabash River runs from northeast Indiana through farm country for the most part across the northern part of Indiana where it kind of makes a right turn and follows more or less the border between Indiana and Illinois and then goes all the way down to the southern edge of Indiana um, along that uh, western border and connects up with the Ohio River which ultimately connects to the Missouri River, Mississippi River and um, so river samples are kind of interesting to look at in a lot of different ways because they get contributions from many sources and um, when we're looking at the diatoms from these systems we also have to keep in mind that they pass through a lot of farmland which generally means there's a lot of nutrients that get added to um, these samples so I'm just doing a little bit of um, calibration for the SCM right now and trying to get the image quality where I want it. Um, these are probably suitable for the students' projects. Um, they just wanted to give them some pictures of the things that they collected samples for. And so this sample was collected from, um, uh, from the shore using uh, milk jugs. This one was just collected basically from, I think, a local park where it interfaces with the river system. And the students just went out with some milk jugs, um, collected some uh, water samples. And part of the reason I had them use milk jugs was because um, the the um, if you just took a little bit of water, you probably wouldn't get enough material in there to actually observe much. So um, the river system itself is just a little bit on the on a little bit on the alkaline edge, and so um, this diatom is slightly dissolved. Actually, it makes for kind of a cool pattern, though. Um, I like the um, the <laughs> the look of. Uh, the way that it's sort of dissolving. But these uh, little openings that you see that are all around here that have sort of like a bigger circle around them are the areoli and the strutted processes on the valve. Normally would be, you know, uh, I usually call them salt and pepper shaker heads, like a bunch of little holes covering a bigger opening. And the... Um, the ones that have this sort of triangle shape around them are actually strutted processes with the covering over the strutted processes been removed um, through dissolution. So I kind of wanted to find some sort of a middle ground view that would let us see all of the detail. Uh, it seems like it will work um, for what's going on. Really, it's just sort of an artsy shot because uh, it's got all these weird dissolution features and uh, it's not very scientific but um, I think it looks cool so sometimes I just take pictures because they look cool um, and then later on I'll colorize them and stick them on the, uh, the Instagram account for um, for the lab so hopefully everybody's doing well out there today um, 
the uh, time that I'm starting is actually way earlier than I normally do. So um, the, hey, not the brain, how's it going? Should I call you Pinky? Um, normally on Wednesdays, I've been starting around two and that's because it's finals week. And I have a lot of work for the student projects that I need to capture images for. And um, so I thought, well, I'll just try to get most of that done now and um, get the images to their students because uh, their final projects are due on Friday. And I'd like to have them get some, some stuff. You're having a crappy week, so you're hoping the weekend will be better. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, sorry to hear that, Pink. The... Um, the week for me has been a busy, busy one. Um, normally, finals week is like uh, sort of vacation time for me where the students are kind of gone. I don't usually give final exams. I just have final projects for most of my classes. And so, um, but the final project this time incorporates me using the scanning electron microscope. So I've actually been doing a bunch of work for the students this week, um, as well as my normal load. And then, um, Usually the graduate students whose committees that I'm on try to get stuff done during the semester and when they can't, they try to squeeze everything in before the semester ends so that they can, I guess, enjoy their summer or whatever. So I have a bunch of uh, students who are trying to get their um, dissertation proposals and that sort of thing in and I'm on their, I'm not their chair, but I'm on their committees and so I have to read through and make comments and, uh, and you know, I give presentations, I have to evaluate them. And so all of those get crammed into the last week usually because um, our schedules are a little bit more open and their schedules are a little bit more open at the end of the semester. So it's been surprisingly busy, but, um, but otherwise my week has been pretty normal. So, um, and I'm trying to to use the little bit of time that I have around working on stuff with students to kind of catch up from where I've been. Uh, it's been a very busy semester for me. And so, um, you know, my research basically falls behind when I have a bunch of teaching responsibilities. And so I'm trying to catch up with uh, a bit of that at the same time, um, which can be problematic. So, um, this file, let me, let's see, it goes in this one that I'm in already, that's nice. This is Wabash River. And the diatom that we're looking at, for anybody who's out there who's curious about what are we looking at, um, that's a diatom up close. This is Lindavia, sort of intermedia, I'm not sure if it's actually intermedia, but I'm going to call it that for now. Um, And uh, we'll see that here in a second when I back off of the image a little bit. So this is the picture that I probably should take for the students. Um, I just was sort of focused in on the middle bits here. But um, hopefully the weekend gets better for you, Binky. Um, I don't know. I something I'm supposed to be doing this weekend, but I don't remember what it is, which is usually the case. Um, we've been wallpapering my daughter's room, and um, I'm supposed to build um, some sort of a bay window structure, bench, shelf, seating area uh, thing in my wood shop. So um, I actually I think I might do a, um, a woodworking stream where I, um, I'm also building a kalimba for my friend Little Chook, and um, who's a streamer here on, uh, on Twitch. Uh, she's an artist, and um, she heard this song playing on uh, the kalimba that was at the beginning of my screen. And I started talking with me about kalimba, and I was like, oh, I make kalimbas. Um, so I sent her some pictures of one, and then she asked me if I would make one for her. So, um, so I'm probably going to stream bits of it. Um, you know, I've got to kind of shape it first. 
uh, and then there's a whole bunch of gluing. So probably what I'll do is a short stream where I'm cutting it into the blocking pieces that I need to make. And then um, I'll probably glue it up off stream and then uh, come back so people can kind of see the other side of it when it's getting close to being complete. So um, I haven't done a woodworking, woodworking stream basically the whole semester, I think, because um, I've just been too busy to do a whole lot of woodworking. So I did a bunch of woodworking streams in the fall. I don't know. It doesn't look perfect, but it looks okay. Um, you know, for for what we're doing with it, it should be fine. Hey, studio, what's up? Um, if you're not following my friend studio, uh, Cornix here, you should please give her a follow. She does, um, streams mostly in the evening, and she looks at things through the microscope, um, does a bunch of drawing, artwork associated with algae, and, um, she also has her own algae farm, uh, so she grows algae, and then from her drawing she, um, extracts the pigments from the algae and then uses them to paint the things that she draws, which I think is really special. And um, uses a lot of natural colors as a result to colorize the things that she's actually drawing, which is sort of a neat uh, way of doing things. So, here she is just jumping on to say hello at a break in her schedule. Had, she's also been having kind of a rough couple of weeks, so. Um, and hello, uh, Cyanophyte as well. Welcome in. We are uh, taking pictures this week, mostly of student uh, research projects. So this is uh, Lindavia Intermedia, sort of Intermedia, probably like Intermedia, um, from the Wabash River. And I don't know what's in the samples, whether there's a lot of diatoms or not. It's probably mostly silt. Um, I had Mallory prepare me some stubs for this sample on Monday, and um, we looked at them yesterday a little bit, but we didn't look at the Wabash River stuff because um, it had a bunch of clay over top of all of the diatoms, so wasn't really able to, um, to see any diatoms in that uh, sample, so I rinsed it a bunch of times, and I rinsed some of these other samples a bunch of times, so hopefully the... Um, the rinsing got most of the clay out. Um, but the other samples largely come from cores, and I think I probably rinsed it like six or seven times this morning, and it still looked like it had some clay in it. So, um, in any case, we'll see. I haven't gotten to those slides yet, so um, if they didn't turn out, maybe the other slides I have on here, or stubs I have in here, would still be okay. And, um, yeah, we'll have something to look at regardless, I think. So it's been a pretty quiet week here. Um, the university, because we're in finals week, and as this sort of week goes along, more and more students are sort of evacuated, right? Um, <laughs> from the campus because they uh, finish all their exams and then uh, try to get out of here as soon as possible. So the university is like slowly calming down fewer and fewer students around. And I actually really like it when the students are gone. Um, it, it feels so weird when you're here this summer, uh, you know, in the summertime and the the students are all gone and you're doing work and the halls feel very, you know, everything feels very empty. Um, and then like a week before classes start, it's just like chaos. There's people everywhere and it, it's such a weird transition. Um, it's a interesting experience to, to sort of sit through. All right, this is a vowel view. the internal view of Lindavia Intermedia. And I don't know what else is even in this slide, so we're gonna pump up the beam intensity a little so I can see a bit better and snoop around, see what's in here. 
teaching life is cyclical, yeah. Yeah, it, it's always nice when <laughs> when um, people just go away. Uh, it's Anitsia. It's uh, a genus belonging... The genus that I most usually um, disparage from the freshwater stuff. Um, because, mostly, not because they're that terrible... Um, in the scanning electron microscope, but in the light microscope, they're really problematic usually. It's hard to tell one from another at the, uh, at the species level. At the genus level, they're, they're okay. Uh, let's see, I don't know where it needs to be. I'm just gonna guess something like this. I do okay at guessing angles. That's all I'm gonna say about that. That was not far off from perfect. Okay, um, so I rotated the stage around a little bit so I can image it at 45 degrees, so I can maximize our field of view. And then I got it into focus for us. So uh, just like I do with photography, generally speaking, first I make sure that the focus is good, and then I work on the composition. And make sure it's going to work and then we can snap a picture. I do want to fix the beam intensity issue and maybe fix the auto brightness. So, do I mentor undergrads over the summer? I do. Um, I did a summer research program over summer and it was fun to be on campus when things were way more chill. So, um, every summer I'm involved in something called the Summer Undergraduate Research Experience, um, which is Basically, I volunteer my time as a professor to work with students for the entire, for a 10 week period over the summer. And it usually starts about two weeks after classes end and it goes for 10 weeks. And I take on students who do research in my lab. And so probably a transition will happen um, in terms of like the streams that we're doing. Um, if I'm focused a little bit more on working with the students um, in the summer, we have a lot more flexibility because the, you know, the only people around are me, basically, um, that are using the SEM. And, um, and the students that are on my, working on projects with me will probably need to use it. So if they're interested in being on the stream, they may be here with me. Um, so you'll get to meet them and they'll be able to talk a little bit about their projects. Um, if they don't want it to be, uh, you know, interacting with the public while they're working on their stuff, then, um, then that time will just be um, set aside for them to work on it. And so we may stream more frequently or we may stream less frequently. I don't know. It just depends on what they want to do. Um, but this summer I'll be working with four students. And um, I kind of had plans in place for exactly what people are going to look at for two of those students. So the other two are a little more flexible at the moment. I'm not sure exactly what they're going to work on. But um, but they'll be here for that 10-week period. And we'll be analyzing samples and um, developing projects for them. And so, yes, I mentor um, undergrads over the summer. And a lot of times they then continue to work on projects into the semester in my lab. And I think at least two of the four students will likely continue on. They're seniors or juniors. Um, they're not graduating seniors, but they're close. And um, I think at least two of them are going to be integrated into our graduate program. So we have a what we call accelerated master's program where students who um, have research projects and have identified that they want to go to grad school can um, continue straight from their undergraduate into a graduate degree and finish it in basically one extra year. So they start working on graduate stuff in their senior year and then they have the summer basically after their senior year and then a whole year as a graduate student and they graduate basically pretty quickly after um, after they graduate from their undergraduate they then get a graduate degree as well. So I think two of the students at least will be um, able to sort of junction directly into the master's program and will be working with me on um, as master's students. We're not totally sure yet, but, um, but they both have discussed it with me. So um, 
And then the other two students are also a little bit older and maybe finishing or close to finishing and um, we'll see what happens with them. But it, it may be like all four of them come in and come out as graduate students within the next two years. So it's kind of a neat process to be able to see people from the undergrad program, you know, directly into the master's program and um, to take projects that we developed sort of as summer research and um, expand it into something that's bigger and in a lot of ways um, maybe a lot more interesting. So, um, you know, you can only do so much research in kind of a 10-week period. So, um, so we'll see. Um, but some of them may be developing things. Um, we'll see. We had some, I have some pretty cool ideas for research projects for, um, for a couple of them. So we'll see where it goes. Um, but, um, I'm hoping one of them will, will want to work. One of those four students that are staying with me over the summer, um, here in the lab will be interested in, um, the crayfish thing that we were doing on Tuesday, we were looking at, um, <laughs> we were looking at crayfish, uh, like just pieces of crayfish plate and looking at the um, diatoms that were living on crayfish. And uh, as I mentioned, I hadn't really thought about the fact that diatoms live on crayfish. I mean, it seems intuitive that they would attach themselves to some of those substrates, but um, I, I just hadn't really, I hadn't read anything about it. And I didn't know and I don't know how much research has been done on diatoms living on crayfish, um, but we found some that were definitely at the time of collection living on the crayfish. And um, I imaged them basically by just taking the crayfish plate, sticking it in the gold sputter coater and sticking it on the SEM and, uh, and looking at what was there. And we found little, you know, little clusters of diatoms of the same species in life position. Um, right, you know, right, right there on the stub. So it's sort of hard to, uh, hard to believe that it's random if there are a bunch of things that are the same species that are all clustered together, um, on the slide or a stub. So, yeah, so, um, the longitudinal study of a river is actually one of the, um, one of my plans. I don't know about the Columbia River because we're not going to probably have the funds to drive students out to um, <laughs> to the Columbia River Basin. Um, but um, I want to look at um, a system where the, it goes from basically the headwaters down to some point in the river where... Um, so that's a potential project. And we have a bunch of um, crayfish that have been collected and I think maybe we also might have one of the students looking at crayfish from the headwaters down to um, you know, or crayfish in a sort of series of different environmental conditions and see, because they've already analyzed the crayfish, we might actually have um, the ability to look at the diatoms that are living on them and see, are they the same kinds of diatoms or the diatoms um, transition along with the chemical and environmental changes that we observe in the crayfish. So it's an interesting prospect and I mean it's going to require that the student is interested in it but I'm interested in it regardless of what happens so um, so we'll try it and yeah it's it should be pretty cool and I mean I think if it works out um, if it's effective and we can see some interesting results um, you know the concept is this idea of um, the river continuum which is basically something that people have looked at for macrophytes and um, macroinvertebrates and um, the idea is basically headwaters are full of things like trees and leaves and dissolved organic matter and the stream is very narrow and um, there's a lot of shade and as you move down the river what happens is it gets wider and the amount of woody debris starts to disappear and it's replaced by um, you know, more and more rivers start to join into the main river. So you get this like contribution of mixed sources and, um, the macroinvertebrates definitely change as you go down the river. But the question is, you know, do diatoms follow a similar path? Do they have diatoms that are dominantly, you know, dependent on woody resources or growing on woody, woody materials, um, or leaves? 
as you transfer down into something that has a lot more sort of you know uh, more sunlight exposure but less light penetration because they tend to be muddier the farther you go downstream as well um, and the discharges might change totally from one to the other so things like the speed of the water and other kinds of environmental controls play a role so it'd be kind of interesting just to see how that happens um, the diatom that we're looking at right now by the way is an internal view of ulnaria and you can see the rim of portula which usually i think there's one rim of portula in ulnaria so one end has these little lip-like structures that are down here on the, um, the bottom end, and then the stri that go across the valve. And typically for ulnaria, one way that you can tell that it's ulnaria, or that you can generally tell that it's an ulnaria, um, is um, that the stri essentially match up across the middle. So uh, you can tell up here a lot more readily than down here. They get a little more disorganized, but. Um, if you were driving across the stri where the areoli are here and you hit the sternum or the central sternum, you could actually find stri on the other side that match up with it. Typically for fragilaria and many of the other diatoms, they're offset such that if you drove into one, you'd end up basically driving into the, um, the you know, interstriated area here rather than onto another stri on the opposite side. So kind of like plants have opposite and whirling leaf patterns or whatever and alternate um, leaf patterns. The, um, the striae on diatoms are sometimes like that as well, where they're um, either alternate or they're opposite. And these are opposite, basically. So um, this is from the Wabash River that we're looking at right now, but I don't know what river system we would be looking at for the, um, for the summer. We haven't gotten that far. Um, I was thinking there's a, um, uh, there's a river that goes through the other side um, on Illinois that comes over and merges into the Wabash River. Um, uh, what's the name of that? It starts with an E. Anyway, um, it seemed like it had some woodier headland areas that we might be able to look at. Um, and so that's one. I kind of want something that's close and small scaled enough that we could tell. So this is Ulnaria. You can see some images of Ulnaria here hiding under um, the mustachio logo in the bottom right. And um, I just zoomed in and took a picture, a close-up picture. I don't think I'm going to take a picture of the of the whole diatom because um, they're very large and I don't think that you would see very much. Um, <laughs> they're very linear uh, diatoms, but there's a girdle bands kind of folded in on the middle part of the valve as well, which uh, detracts from the picture, but you get just some sense of how big they are. Um, that's about 200 microns long. And so, um, you know, at, at some point, it's hard to tell what you're looking at. Um, it, it's so big, basically, you're in outer space. Uh, it just looks like a little band on the screen. It's a diatom in, uh, it landed on its edge. I think it's just a navicula, but it, it landed on its side, so I can't really see enough of it to tell. Um, I'm just kind of jumping around a little bit to see what's in the sample and to image some of the um, species that we find. One of the things that was kind of neat um, when we were looking at this material in the light microscope, um, when the students collected the, uh, the samples, we put some of it in the light microscope. And um, I wanted them to take a look at what was growing. Um, I, I don't know that they had a good plan uh, when they started. They were kind of like, I don't know, we're gonna collect some stuff from the Wabash River and then we'll collect some stuff from Deming Park and uh, and we'll just kind of compare it. Um, and when I was helping them prep the samples, one of the things that happened was um, I actually, they needed the samples um, to, to look at the um, unprocessed version. And I grabbed them and took them away from where we were storing the slides that I was making and um, brought them in so they could use it. I was just like chaos was going on that day, but there was no way to label which samples were which. And I was using the samples themselves to help mark which slide it was associated with. So I just went ahead and made the stubs or the, um, the microscope slides for these. And then um, I brought them in and I was like, well, I don't know which one is which like before we look at it, but I will tell you which one it is as soon as we look in it, because you can easily tell the difference between a river sample and a lake sample. And um, what was kind of neat about it was 
you could see the difference pretty easily. Um, one of them was filled with basically all the same thing, and a lot of it, and um, that was basically how I could tell it was the Deming Park sample. And um, we looked at the Deming Park sample, I think, on Tuesday morning, and um, it was filled with a bunch of these chain-forming fragilaria uh, that grow face-to-face -face in these ribbon colonies. And then the Wabash River one we couldn't see in the SEM, but in the light microscope we could see the samples were a lot more diverse. The species that you see in the Wabash River um, are high nutrient indicators, and um, they took some water chemistry data and did these really simple experiments where you can add a tablet, it will change the nutrient um, value of um, the water, it'll show you like how much nitrogen and phosphorus are present. And one of the things that we saw was the Deming Park sample just had a little bit of nutrients in it, and the Wabash River ones had a lot of nutrients in it. And so we could actually just see that from the diatoms. I could just tell them this is the Wabash River sample. I could tell without knowing in advance because um, it was filled with a much higher diversity of species, and then the species that were present were also higher nutrients. Um, you can confirm it from the SEM images that made these stubs with stuff that was labeled. Um, but I think that's kind of neat that, um, that the project basically is linked very easily for them. And then once I sort of sort of explaining, like, here's what we're seeing in this one, here's what we're seeing in this one, you can see that there's higher diversity here, and also there's much higher nutrients here, and that that's linked with the fact that the Wabash River passes through all this farmland, and the other one was taken from a little park. Um, which does get things like goose poop, but it doesn't get a lot of anything else in it. So, <laughs> takes you back to the AOS day or AOL days. Yeah, the um, the SCM is not downloading; um, it's actually scanning as it's building the image. So, um, you know, the idea that uh, that it took a picture and that we're just waiting for it to download is one people often bring uh, to to the stream. Because uh, it does sort of seem like that's what's going on, but that's definitely not what's going on. Um, it's building it instantly, and um, you're just catching it being built. So you're watching it be built, um, and, and line by line, dot by dot, basically. So um, it's hot off of the SEM as it's building. You're not getting like a picture that's trying to um, to download, but it does seem a little like that. Also, welcome in, Diet Toms. Um, if you're not following Diet Toms, you should definitely give them a follow. Um, they're, uh, not only do they have a great name, I mean, they name themselves after Diet Toms, but um, uh, they also have some really great microscopy that they do in the evenings. And uh, he knows a ton about, um, especially the ciliates and a lot of the larger organisms um, that he's encountered in his microscope. And um, I hang out in there and help him with the little uh, diatom things that he runs into. Um, ironically, he's named after diatoms, but um, has a hard time identifying most of them, other than the fact that he almost always gets, like when it's a diatom, he knows it's a diatom, but he doesn't know which kind. Um, I'm gonna give you some help though. Uh, this diatom is Stephanodiscus. You can observe Stephanodiscus right here. Stephanodiscus looks like this. Um, and uh, it has a set of spines around on the outside edge. It has a circular valve. And then the um, areoli, which you can see here, are divided into like pie wedges. So um, they have a spiky collar. They usually have a set of um, um, Mantophotoporchula that you can't really see in the um, in the light microscope, but you can see the spines in the light microscope, and you should be able to see the fact that the valve face is divided into these um, like pie wedges, which are called fascicles, and um, you can get it into Stephanodiscus pretty easily just on those two characteristics, um, or at least get it into things that are very close to Stephanodiscus. So the name Stefano means crown in uh, in Latin. And discus means like it's a disc. So it's a disc that looks like a crown. So uh, again, I always try to point out if you know a little bit about the words and, um, and where they originate, it actually kind of makes it easier to learn the names of things and remember what they are. For example, this diatom is a navicula. And uh, the name navicula 
comes from the fact that it looks like a boat. So you can think navy, navicula, and uh, it, usually they are boat shaped. So uh, that's useful if you're trying to learn a bunch of crazy Latin words and, uh, and figure out um, what the name of some diatom is, at least the genus. So I rotated this, uh, the image around a little bit. Um, this diatom, you can tell it's navicula for a number of reasons. First, let me change the speed. One is it has a raphe that runs through the middle. So we know that it lives in attached lifestyle. That's what the raphe is, a, a way that organisms like diatoms can crawl around. Ones that don't have a raphe don't, don't live attached lifestyles. They float in the water. Um, but this one has a raphe, and the raphe is in the center of the valve. And it is a motile diatom, which means it lives attached to the surface and crawls around. And you see these all the time in pretty much all kinds of material if you're looking at attached diatoms. And um, in the scanning electron microscope and even in the, um, uh, the light microscope, you should be able to see, if it's a navicula, you should be able to see that it has lineolate striae. So the striae are actually composed of a set of little rows of, um, of areoli. And in the case of navicula, they are always slit shapes and they more or less parallel the raphe. So you'll see that they're basically oriented um, in the, you know, pointing towards the apex, basically, um, not the other way. I don't think there are any diatoms that have dash stuff that point the other way. Um, but uh, that pattern enough is enough. And as a raphe, if it's roughly boat shaped and then it has these um, uh, lineolate striae, that's enough. You can just say navicula. You don't need to... Uh, to do anything else or look at anything else for the genus. Um, you know, I guess you could look and see if it doesn't have something weird like a stigma um, or uh, other types of weird striae on them. But generally speaking, that's enough. You can call it navicula and move on. So um, we'll get a little picture of this thing and navicula look like this. You can see the um, characteristic lineolate striae are present um, in all of these. Still nostalgic, yeah, sorry. Also, welcome in Boba Binks. Didn't mean to neglect you as busy blabbing. Um, if you like art and you like painting and you like to watch somebody actually go through the process of building and drawing things, uh, he creates these templates uh, uh, from pictures of birds or pets and animals, basically. And then um, he uses those to basically uh, imprint images over top of um, sort of abstract paintings that he does and um, and then paints inside the outlines that are transferred on but allows him to very quickly sort of do a bunch of um, uh, renditions of the same art and then um, he kind of picks the one that he likes the best and uh, and focuses on making those look really great so definitely give Bobo a follow he's a uh, subscriber here, but it's also um, a very uh, interesting uh, streamer, so, and good conversation there, too. Um, let's see. Navicula is a non-Ehrenberg diatom. Uh, are you able to measure the spacing between the lineal? Oh, on the SCM, we can measure anything. Uh, I don't know if you can see it when I do it. Uh, I have measuring tools that are here, uh, so we can measure anything we want, uh, just live from the image. And if I zoom in on it, um, it's taking a picture right now, so I can't do anything. But if I zoom in on it, we can actually um, we can measure anything: the space between the stri, the lengths and widths of things. Um, everything's an option on the SCM. And I can actually bring the pictures back in after we've taken them and, uh, and measure them on the SCM as well. So, yes, definitely can measure stuff. Uh, in, in every case. Um, my microscope also has the fancy software, so I can measure most of these things on the actual um, light microscope images for, for many of them. Seeky Wisdom, thank you for the raid. I hope everything went well. Um, Seek is a, a streamer here on, um, on Twitch. He 
almost exclusively does gaming and uh, and you can see that there from his um, from his about information and um, I check in on seek at least once a day when I see him exercising he's been um, he's been doing uh, sharing his exercise with us so he's been mostly focusing on uh, games with the connects or the Wii Fit um, or things that basically are fitness related and uh, how many days has it been like 70 days now he's been streaming or something like that where he's uh, he's been doing workouts and uh, you know he's just a great guy on top of everything else the other day he was doing uh, he was in Hawaii and he was wandering around in Hawaii and uh, did some travel stream for us which was really really cool um, I've never been to Hawaii, so yeah, 61 days since he started, so um, so that's pretty cool. Um, so please give our friend Seek a follow, and um, if you if you want to feel like you should be exercising, because that's the way I always feel. I eat my lunch while Seek is exercising because he's on California time, and then I'm like, yep, I'm just here getting fatter while he's there working out. Um, that's what's going on. Um, but, uh, sometimes he, he works a little too hard at his exercise and then, um, he likes to share by crying into this, uh, you know, like falling over and crying, uh, during the stream. And I almost always miss the crying parts for some reason. So, um, but you should follow him, give some support. He also does some gaming streams. So, I mean, all the things are game related, so it's sort of gamifying exercise, but, um, ooh, that's cool. What is this? Oh, it's a Pleurocyra. This is a riverine diatom. So Pleurocyra have these big, uh, acelli on the outside edges of the valve face and a rimoportula, and they look like, um, they, they're tricky. They look like they should be, um, uh, plankton, but they're actually benthic species. And then this looks like it's maybe a Melosyra, um, also covered with a little bit of clay, though. Um, despite the fact that we rinsed these and uh, treated them with nitric acid, sometimes there's still just a little bit of junk on, um, on the valves. And that Pleurocyra is actually broken. It's kind of an egg-shaped diatom, and um, they look kind of cool in the SEM, but... Uh, I disdain broken diatoms from most of the time from my pictures unless I'm trying to see the internal structure of the diatom I usually try to avoid broken broken diatoms like completely broken diatoms so that one was sort of broken in half um, this is a another Melosyra it looks like um, or maybe an Ellerbeckia And see there's a bunch of little things in here kind of box shaped diatoms um, and those are mostly because they're in girdle view so when I tuned in this morning Seek was doing some Wii tennis um, but my favorite streams are the ones where he's being yelled at by a trainer who's telling him what things to do and why he's not doing them well enough because uh, I feel like it's very motivating um, moment for me. Watching somebody else get yelled at is always fun too. So um, this tie time is uh, Cockanese. That's the genus Cockanese. And on Diatom stream the other day, he had some samples from um, from San Francisco Bay, I believe. And they look very much like Pacific plankton samples, except for um, his microscopes a lot. The imaging was a lot cleaner than um, what Pacific Plankton can do. And if you've watched some of Pacific Plankton's streams, you'll know that that's actually saying a lot because her streams look great. Um, but he had a bunch of um, ismia, which are these really large benthic diatoms that create zigzag colonies, and they were covered by um, marine cockanese. The cockanese occur in both freshwater and marine systems. So, um, But this is what cockanese looks like. It's basically an egg-shaped diatom, um, and then um, they're monoraphid, which means they have a raphe on one of the valves, and the other valve looks totally different and doesn't have a raphe, 
And so if you don't have both of them, it's kind of hard to identify them, or if you haven't seen a bunch of them. Um, this is the aryfid valve of Cucanis. It attaches with the other side, and then this is the side that's basically exposed to the um, you know, sunlight, or the backside of the, um, you know, the diatom that's basically exposed to the open air and, um, or water. And so um, the raphe is used to move up and down or to, to, to stay attached to a substrate, and this side doesn't have any raphe. So, but it doesn't need one on this side because it's usually attached to a plant, and that's basically their lifestyle, their, their epiphytic. So I'm going to actually take a picture here of this epi of this um, cockanese. Um, but usually when we see them, they're epiphytic. They're either growing on plants or algae or sometimes other diatoms. So that's their, their life behavior. All right. Um, sorry, I've been busy chatting about other stuff. Um, need to follow more fatness, stream <laughs> fatness streamers? <laughs> uh, <laughs> people are, yeah that's exactly it uh we're eating watching you sweat uh <laughs> fatness to fitness <laughs> vicarious exercise is the best exercise i actually wish it was me exercising but um usually i'm at work so uh, anyway give seek a follow um he's very fun and um he also has a great there's like a whole like I have my microscope sort of squad. There's like a there's like a seek squad. There's like a group of people that are always around in seek stream. That are other streamers that mostly do um, retro gaming. So it's like Lady Gamer Ga and Haggard Hessian and um, and all the people there. They like seek is like the hub of a really um, great collection of uh, gaming streamers that are sort of like small streamers um, that do mostly retro games. And um, so they're always playing like Odd World or Zelda games or uh, torturing themselves with Donkey Kong things. Um, but uh, if you're into that sort of nostalgic gaming, uh, I don't think you could do any better than, um, than uh, hanging out with Seeker or his family there on, on Twitch. So, and then we have some overlap. So if you're wondering like, why am I watching some guy doing fitness? Um, our overlap is actually through Dell, who also sometimes does um, a little bit of the uh, uh, retro gaming. And um, they have this thing called um, Save save and Raid or something like that. What's it called? Seek? Where they, um, they, one of them plays the game and does the stream and then they hand it off to the next person and then they hand it off to the next person. And so they pick up where the last person left off and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Dell lives in uh, Seek's neighborhood, which is kind of cool, um, out there in uh, in California. And um, uh, and they do it for charity. So they do these like um, retro gaming, and they uh, I think this year they somehow um, accumulated more than ten thousand dollars. And save and raid, yeah. Yeah, it's for suicide awareness. And I think the first time I watched them do it was a year ago, uh, before the one that just recently happened, and they made, um, they had raised uh, $5,000. And then I think this year it was something like $11,000. Just totally blew out um, what they were expecting to do for it, but um, all for charity, and that's super cool. And uh, I think a consequence of that is that um, Seek had to shave his hair not his beard, but uh, Ray Felis Valve uh, shaved off his hair in order to meet one of those goals. So uh, wouldn't be much of a um, commitment for me to shave my head because uh, that happens all the time. Like I'm mean, shave off my hair all like I don't know once a month or something. Uh, try to get this wig under control, and. Uh, the beard, though, I don't think I would risk shaving. Nobody would recognize me anymore if I didn't have the beard, so. Uh, what's this little guy? What did we find? Oh, it's a little tiny stephanodiscus from the inside, I believe. Yeah, I think it's stephanodiscus. Internal view. There are also some Thalassia syra and some weird stuff uh, that have, like, kind of marine 
or saline origins that sometimes show up in the Wabash River. So this is a sample from the Wabash River for people who came in with the raid and we're looking at it on a scanning electron microscope, um, which is the reason why it's black and white um, instead of looking at it in color. There is no color in a scanning electron microscope because of, there's no light in the actual microscope. It's using electrons to see and to draw images for us. And so um, what we're seeing is basically uh, a rendering of what's there um, as we uh, bombard the sample with electrons and then capture the reflection of those electrons in a sensor in the, uh, in the SEM. So uh, the colorized ones that you see that are either below me, if you look at it that way, or on the um, right side of the screen are ones that are my artwork. So I've taken those into Photoshop or, um, or Lightroom or Procreate or something and basically colorized them. And um, mostly to mislead people into thinking that, uh, that we do color stuff here. But um, for the most part, um, diatoms are made out of glass or silica, or opaline silica, basically. And um, in, in the real world, they don't actually have any color after the chloroplasts have been removed, which is the way that we're looking at them right now. They've been treated and chloroplasts are all taken out. So, um, so they would just be translucent um, or transparent. And so... Um, you're not missing out on anything by looking at them in black and white. Um, but I, I feel like people um, probably would like to see the color versions of them, so I colorize them. And um, I'm actually really far behind on my colorization. Like really, <laughs> I have like two months worth of stuff. I haven't posted anything in a really long time that I've colorized because I've just been so busy, um, you know, with work uh, that the art side sort of has suffered as a result. And I was thinking about doing a stream where I colorize some SEM images, um, but I'm also taking a bunch of photos for birding and um, so the photography ends start to pick up and so like I don't even have time to do anything else. Even when I had a chance to do some stuff, I, I opted to work on my photography um, in a stream. I think it was like two weeks ago um, because I need to get some of that done as well. This, uh, this little guy, this is a gomphonema? No, is it? I don't think it is. I think it's actually meridian. It's hard for me to tell. Let's look on this end. Eh, I think it's a gomphonema. Um, Let's look right here, actually. No, no, I think it is a meridian. So I think it's meridian circulare. Because uh, I think these are costi that we're seeing right here, coming through the valve on both sides. Um, but they have a similar shape to gomphonema. This is also a, a, um, a, a riverine species, of, a rheophilic species, one that likes flowing water. Um, I'm going to rotate it around a little because I don't like the angle that it's at. And we'll zoom in. I'll try to get a nice clear image of it and then I can come see what people are talking about in chat. Uh, it's a challenge to, to focus on what's going on in the scanning electron microscope and also simultaneously try to see what's going on in chat because the SEM takes up kind of my whole screen and all of my attention. Um, this instrument costs something like $160,000, so I usually want to give it all of my attention when I'm using it so that I don't screw something up. Okay. Uh, yeah, Sacramento. Um, you did it live on stream. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotta, you gotta do you gotta sh give the people what they want all right get cleaned up see thanks for hanging around um, came for the color stayed for the disco yeah that's good Sophia Cornix told me that she was just gonna come in and say hi and then she was on break and that she wasn't gonna be here and uh, and here she is hanging out with me uh 
Um, sorry, Anna. I actually didn't see your message until late last night. And um, I've never seen a Baremus. Never. So congratulations on finding your uh, very rare diatom. You had an hour plus gap. Oh, okay. Well, that's plenty of time. I don't know how long I'll stream, but um, let's take this picture. Let's do it. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a Byremus, so I mean I've seen pictures of it. So, and then uh, I got up this morning and I've just been running, uh, like I usually do every day from the time I wake up until I don't know eight o'clock. And then I'm worn out, and I usually just stare at the wall, or engage in other people's streams, or stare at the TV for like three or four hours, so. Pinky, you gotta go. Catch you later if I'm still on. Okay, I'll probably be on for a few more hours. Um, this will probably be a little bit longer than normal stream. Hang on a second. Uh, you're gonna jump too. Okay, cool. Yeah, I might be on for a little while. We'll see. So I started really early. We've only been going for about an hour right now. And um, like I said, I don't normally start at 12.45 or whenever I did, so um, we should be fine. Oh, uh, it looks like Mason is having trouble getting into the lab. And I may need to let him in. So all this picture is collecting. I may just leave you guys here for a second and uh, run to see if I can let Mason into the lab. Um, he's got to take some pictures. He's actually one of the students who um, is working on this project. So, um, and he may come back with me here and hang out in the lab. Uh, we'll see, because I'm going to be looking at some of his samples. So, one moment. Be right back.
just ran off, leaving you only with the Meridian to entertain yourselves. Uh, Mason says he's going to come join us, I think, so that'll be nice. Meridian Circulare. And I was getting tired of the sample anyway. Let's go see if we can find... Let's see what this is first. Hmm. It's a Lindavia. It is Ocelata. Seems like an okay image. Just a little bit of clay on it, but otherwise pretty clean. And let's see if I can get the focus just a little tighter. That's as good as it's gonna get. And I'll start that. sure that the brightness this looks like it needs a slight adjustment for that um, and then we'll rotate over and take a look at um, some of the samples that Mason collected so Mason is an undergrad who will be working with me over the summer for the shirt program um, that I was talking about earlier in the stream and he's currently in my lakes and wetlands class so um, one of the projects that we're actually looking at and um, material from that samples and he actually needed me to let him into the lab so he could get his uh, light microscope uh, pictures that he collected from uh, one of the cores so this looks like it's going to be good and we can talk a little bit with mason about um, the core that he collected and um, and a little bit about, I mean, this project's not a really big project, it's a little tiny thing that we're doing for the class, um, but then he can kind of see some of the diatoms that we've been looking at. And I thought it was sort of cool um, because Mason was um, looking at stuff in the light microscope and then trying to identify it, and so, um, but just as a complete novice. And he went to the diatoms of North America website, which is, um, uh, this one that we all use for uh, looking at stuff in North America pretty frequently and um, I'd say he got about 50 or 60 percent of them to genus correctly which is pretty good for somebody who doesn't know anything about diatoms and um, just had light microscope images to work with so um, <laughs> how is it going micro learning um, welcome in. I know I was going to do mushrooms this week and then it was like, oh, these student projects are just an immense amount of time on the SEM that I needed to spend. So I just went ahead and, um, have been, um, running those. Hey, Mason. Hey. Have a seat. Welcome in. Let me see if I can make some adjustment to the camera so that people can see you. How many people you got? Uh, right now, 16 people. So a small crowd. Uh, usually our stream holds something like... Uh, somewhere between 10 and 100 is our normal sort of number. But in the middle of the afternoon, on a work day, a little bit smaller. Let's see. Camera control, zoom. Now you can be in the field of view. We're up here in a bubble, and you're hidden in a little bit of a uh, you're hidden in a little bit of the magic bubble oh, I get blur. The um, very close to the coolest name. There you go. Hi everybody. Uh, he's just saying that because his name is Jason. So uh -huh. by the way, he thinks his name is the coolest. 
Uh, is anyone here from Seattle? You actually just lost uh, one of the persons from Seattle who was here. <laughs> one A, one B, uh, which was um, Studio Cornix. So um, she lives in Seattle. And I don't know that she does birding, um, but she definitely lives in that city. So um, we are looking at some of the student projects. And this is from the Wabash River. So these are samples that some of the other students collected. And this is Lindavia Ocelata. Um, but I have on here the Shyster Pit Core. Are you rotating? Yeah, I just moved over. And I haven't looked at these samples, so I don't know what they look like. But I think it's this one is the top sample, and then this one is the next one down. So hopefully there's some diatoms in these. And then I think this one is 10. I think it's like 1, 2, and 10 that I have on here, which seem to have the most diatoms. So I see some just in our low resolution view, so I know that they're there. But let's take a look at some of them, see what we can find. So um, I haven't really talked about what the projects are, um, although I was talking a little bit about um, so this was stuff I was looking at was from the Wabash River, which was Cassidy and Allison's project. Um, but all these little guys are diatoms that you see. This round one, these like Q-tip shaped ones, um, these little boat shaped ones, which we talked about before. Um, earlier in the stream are um, naviculas. These Q-tip shaped ones are Asterionella, They're the most common thing in the lake today when we were out collecting the live material. Um, we saw a bunch of those. And all of the samples kind of got a lot of clay in it, but um, you can kind of still see the diatoms around the clay. This is some sort of large Lindavia or Cyclotella. And there's a bunch of little things in here. So uh, let's see, if we zoom in on this one, maybe we can see some detail. It's covered with clay. Um, I rinsed these samples like eight times, six or eight times, or something like that, and they still had clay in them. And I was like, <laughs> this is a lot of clay in the material. Um, when it comes from a core, especially, uh, it tends to be the case. Um, how long do you have to hang around, Mason? Um, pretty much all day. Just oh, need cool. To, just need to get food and then we should be good. You need food? Sometimes. Sometimes. Hmm. Uh, do you want to learn how to use the SCM in front of other people? Sure. Okay. I know you tried to teach us in 110 a long time ago. But yeah, yeah. You should have uh, got a little piece of it back then, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the same instrument. Nothing has changed from, what was that, two years ago? It was a while. Three years ago? Something like that. 2019. Fall of 2019. Oh, my God. That was a long time ago. It was three years. All right. Well, you have some experience with it. Sort of. <laughs> From three years ago. Yeah, I wouldn't call it experience, but... I've You're a pro it. by now. I've witnessed it. Uh, but it's actually useful uh, for people to see, like, um, how easy it is to use, mm -hmm. right? So you, they can't actually see what I'm doing because I don't have, like, a top cam. Um, but uh, most of the controls are pretty easy. And then I can just move over here and I'll monitor the chat and read their questions or comments so you know what's going on. Microphone's here, camera's there, mouse. Those are the primary controls you need. We'll switch places. You want your. Yeah. All right. This is actually um, a lot of times when I have students, I just let them run the instrument. So. Um, that's magnification, so in and out, basically. Does it focus on like the, the mouse on where it magnifies to? Uh, if the focus is the next wheel down, it doesn't do any auto focusing for you, so that one controls the focus. So normally, what you want to do is zoom in, focus, and then zoom out and compose. So if you wanted to take a picture of that Lindavia, for example, you could just zoom in on it. Um, you can't hurt anything, 
Or I wouldn't let you handle so it. So don't be timid. Yeah, don't bother. You can't zoom in and smash the <laughs> anything. You're fine. And um, my um, phone is a little behind, so I gotta try to catch up. Okay, so yep, use the bottom wheel to focus it. And you probably want to get closer than that to focus. This is, focus is really sensitive to how close you are and what you can see. So you're going out, you need to go in. There you go. You can get closer than that. Get real close. See that dirt? Try to get the dirt in focus there. Where, you, where, where, where your mouse is, there's some dirt. Right there? Yeah, it's like clay. Mm -hmm. How focused is focused? I mean, if you go past it, it'll start to unfocus. But can you see those little dots that are all around the yeah. top of the valve face? You want to be able to see those. So usually if you get the dirt in focus, you get whatever's behind it in focus too. Like that? If you're happy with it. I'm pretty happy with it. Okay. Is um, everybody else happy with it? Well, who cares what they think? <laughs> um, and then you can, if you want to zoom out to get the picture composed a little bit better. Yep so that it's not just taking up the entire field of view. And uh, if you use the middle mouse button where it has the wheel and you click, it moves that to the middle of the screen wherever you just clicked. Oh, so. Yeah, so you can also click and drag if it's creating confusion for you. Yes, exactly like that. So you wanna get the diatom in the middle of the screen. You're closer, keep going. This way? You want the whole diatom, right? Ooh. So the sides and the, the back and everything. Should I zoom out a little bit? Probably. That's focus. Well, now you definitely got the whole thing in there. Nice. Okay. Um, are you happy with that? You can probably get a little closer if you wanted to. You don't need to be that far out. That farther yeah you're going the wrong way <laughs> <laughs> it's like driving stick shift uh after about like 20 minutes you, you just you just meld with the instrument so it'll still seem super awkward at first and then it'll be like oh i don't even think about it anymore you're happy with the focus well you can zoom back in and then just zoom back out when you're ready to oh okay uh at you day says they're happy with it, but if you think it needs to be both close up and wide shot, oh, but they think we need both a close up and a wide shot. You know what? I think that's a good idea. Oh, that's fine. We can do that. Just get it in focus. If you're happy with the focus, we can move on to the next step. I just let students be the own their own judge about whether it's in focus or not, and then later I can nitpick. Well, I'm, I'm kind of a perfectionist. At the same time, I'm not very good at this <laughs> not yet. Not skilled so. enough to be perfect. <laughs> so, It's okay. All right, so if you click on the little thing that looks like uh, a histogram up there, the green, yep, that's the speed. And you want to change the speed from 4 to 7 or 8. That's a 3-minute photo. So once you click it, basically it will take 3 minutes for it to develop. Oh, cool. And you can see that the resolution increases, so you can gauge how good or bad your focusing was. I think it actually looks really focused. So far, I like it. So I, th I think the exposure looks fine and the focus looks fine. So just go ahead and hit the little button that looks like a box with an arrow at the very bottom of that column. Yep. And then um, I always do this because they can't see anything. Any of this? Yes, they can only see this part over, so I usually zoom in on it with the mouse wheel um, once it starts taking the picture. And now you're taking it. Cool. There you go. I usually use a Yeti whenever I used to stream. Um, I have a Yeti that I'm going to get. Is this so, the Snowball? Or like the, the, the blue the Yeti? One. Yeah, the blue Yeti. I'm working on it. I have these uh, micro microphones that we got that I've been using for since you know, COVID happened, basically, mm -hmm. the university bought these for us, and um, they work okay, 
but I probably am going to get a little bit nicer sound quality. And um, you got a cool little setup. Yeah, everything works really well. And if you want to see what's going on, uh, the OBS is hiding under here. So you are. I'm off to the side, which is you know where I like being hidden. That's okay. And uh, you can see what people are saying right here. Um, <laughs> here, this ATU day says the render speed. It's like they're back in college. Um, so it's actually not the render speed. It's the scanning speed. So um, I know that's just a technical difference, but um, it's drawing it as we're actually seeing it. So the slower it scans, the higher the resolution of our image is. And you're seeing it build the image in real time. So as it scans across the surface, you're actually getting pixel by pixel um, updated information on the screen. So if we speed up the image, it takes no time at all. In fact, it's the same process when we're looking at it and it looks like a video camera, but it's grainy. And that's just because it's scanning very quickly, like an old CTR uh, TV screen. And, um, and so it's really building the image as we're seeing it. It's not downloading it or rendering it. You're not, you're not, um, you're not waiting for the computer's delay. It's the same speed every time because it's the speed it's actually scanning across the sample. So um, you can actually make it take longer and get a higher resolution image out of it, but it's, it's basically just gonna move slower and then it'll give us more information for each block of pixels that come back our way. So um, it's more about building the image, right? So. Um, here you can see pretty nicely, this is Lindavia Intermedia. So, Lindavia Intermedia. Uh, yep. And for people in chat. Did you see the diatom like three slides back? The one that had like, like I had teeth on it? Three slides back? Yeah. It, on the, this one right here, on that side. Oh, hang on a second. slideshow is it just looked like the the pit that Boba Fett fell into I just wanted to make that <laughs> okay 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 <laughs> it's the <coughs> pit of doom or whatever it is the uh, what's it called uh, something it's the name of the animal right it's like an ant lion yeah yeah either way uh, ATU day wants to know what tools do I use to colorize the image um, I use Sarlacc, Sarlacc there thing. we go we, we got audience to help. That's yeah. We don't have to Google stuff. This is fun. Uh, <laughs> the SEM does not pour any gold over the sample. Okay, so um, I'll come back to these questions because I can answer them. First, what we should do is um, these are in Cassidy's folder. So I'm going to make you a folder. Yes. You can type in the second best name of all time there if you'd like. You just hit enter. That's fine. There's only one mason, so we don't need to be too specific. And um, this sample is, uh, if you just put SP01, so that you know it's from the first sample from uh, oh. Mr. Pitt, and then uh, space Lindavia, L-I-N-D-A-V-I-A, -A -A, and... You said intermedia. Intermedia, yeah, is the species, so... Is that right? Yeah, yeah, just hit in there. If it's spelled wrong, we'll fix it in post. Awesome. <laughs> um, and then we can close this picture and go back to the live field of view. And now you can play with controls. So you can either find another diatom for us or you can uh, zoom out and take a wide angle view if you like. And I will try to answer these questions. Okay. Um, so the, for the tools that I use, um, normally I use Photoshop. Oh. I will also sometimes use a combination of Photoshop and Lightroom, and sometimes I will also use Procreate. So I sort of bounce between things um, until I get the combination of colors and textures and whatever that I want. And um, so I usually bring the images in and I futz around with them in Lightroom to make the image quality look better. And then I usually export that into Photoshop where I usually play around with the color tools in Photoshop 
but occasionally I just decide that actually Procreate does a better job of like um, selecting contrasts or it's easier to use in some ways or I'm just on my iPad colorizing them in which case I only have Lightroom and the um, Procreate on my iPad so if I'm like you know watching TV and I'm colorizing them while I'm doing that and I don't want to have to bother going downstairs and firing up the PC and using Photoshop I will sometimes just bounce in between Lightroom and um, back and forth between Lightroom and Procreate until it's, I'm happy with the image. Um, so for Sanofite, the um, the gold plating that goes over top of all of the samples actually happens in another instrument um, called a sputter coder, which is spelled like this: sputter coat sputter oh, no. coder. And um, it uses, um, it has a little gold foil basically at the top and it ionizes that material, um, turns it into a plasma state basically. And then um, it gets deposited onto the sample in the sputter coat chamber in a vacuum. And, um, and then those samples then come out of that chamber and we put them into the scanning electron uh, machine. So the sputter coating process happens in a totally different instrument that's just like on a countertop um, slightly away from where we are. So, um, But it doesn't pour anything. Uh, it turns the gold into plasma and then it deposits itself um, when the charge basically, because it's the material stuck up in the plasma cloud. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Call Drogo. <laughs> if we had Call Drogo here, uh, he would pour the gold over uh, probably oh, all of us um, into our mouths and to under, um, over our heads. The Game of Thrones reference. <laughs> I like <Yeah>. that. <laughs> Very good. Uh, what's happening right now? Are you happy with this? I'm pretty happy with it. Well, why don't we take a picture? Do I have to wait for the full thing to get done? No. no? Okay. Whenever you want. Um, just make sure that the speed is going the speed that you want the picture at because if you click it and it's on two We get a picture at two which takes like ten seconds so Perfect it does look nice Also, this is nice because um, when I When I'm running the SCM, I can't talk to people or I can kind of like <laughs> I can kind of look at chat and start answering a question, work on the SEM, and then blab for a while, and then get it to the point where it's trying to take a picture. Which I think it's easier if you use the rolly wheel, because um, it's going to be off center for people. Um, and then I can blab for a while, and then I can come back and look at OBS while it's taking a picture. So like while we're doing this, you could come back and look at oh, OBS okay. if you want. Um, Hey, Joseph Radio Joe, hello. Um, welcome in. So we're looking at some material that Mason and I collected. Um, Hi, Joe. About a month ago, we went out on a little boat, just me and Mason. And uh, it was an afternoon at the field trip. And um, we used a coring device to collect a short pour from a lake that was an old coal mine. Uh, strip pit and they filled it with water and called it a lake and um, we got this really nice core from it and what we did is came back to the lab and they chopped it up into slices that represent time and so from the top of the core to the bottom of the core um, we have probably goes back to when the um, when the strip pit was initiated into a lake um, because there's the bottom part of the core doesn't have any diatoms in it it's just filled with like silt and sand. And then you can see this sort of transgression from that towards the top of the core that has lots of diatoms in it. And um, so Mason's project for the Lakes and Wetlands class was to try to take a look at what's going on in the core, help me collect it, help sample it, um, all those things we've already done. And um, he looked at some of the stuff in the light microscope mm -hmm. and now we're getting some SEM time. So this worked perfectly. Yeah, we're having fun. We have fun. And 
Was that Sam is here as well? Hello, Sam Chung. Um, Sam Chung, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sam's our one of our like uh, longest subscribed members. He's been subscribed to the channel for a year now. So, Dang. Um, and often gifts gift subs people. Uh, so that's nice. Um, ATU Day says, quarry pools are super nice for scuba diving and you can always get interesting samples from the bottom of them. I actually learned to scuba dive in a quarry um, because, I, you know, where, we, where I lived, where I was learning was DC and there wasn't really any great places to go scuba diving around um, where I was. And uh, we went to a quarry to do scuba diving. Um, it was very cold and dark. How do you usually label them if you get two of the same one? You just put a two after it. Put a two? Okay, I don't know if it's You don't proper. have to be too clever. Just do whatever you're gonna do. Um let's see. Uh Diet Toms, who's Jason, says, Do you ever get radiolarians or are those found in completely different samples? So radiolaria are like true radiolaria are marine organisms. So we don't get any of those in my samples because I mostly look in freshwater systems. Um, if you want to lump in things like heliozoans as radiolaria, then um, they don't really leave a record. Uh, those things basically don't produce uh, hard parts that, that are preserved. Um, but we do get things like sponge spicules pretty frequently, and there's probably some in this sample. And we get pollen. We get phytoliths, we get, um, if you're just concerned about organisms that leave skeletons, I know you know what a testate amoeba is. We sometimes get the plates of testate amoeba, so they have these sort of like, I think they're silica plates um, that they sometimes leave behind. And um, I've seen those before in samples. And um, we also get uh, ostracod valves occasionally. <coughs> um, Dinoflagellate cysts when I don't use nitric acid. This time I did. And I'm trying to think of what else we actually get. Um, Chrysophyte scales, I think, is the other thing. So see the line that runs down the length of the valve? Right here? Uh, oh, right here. This one, yeah, that one in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's the raphe, and you want to make sure that that's in focus. So oh. when you're doing your focusing. Um, there's also a trick you can do, which is... Um, if you double click in an area, it just ignores the rest of the screen and it only focuses and, and shows us what's going on in there. And also, um, this speed, if you set it to like four, it'll be a little bit cleaner and you can still focus with it. Cool. So. And then to make that little box go away, just double click. It doesn't have to be in the box, but. So would that be ideal then, right there? I think it looks good. You right. can slow it down and check if you'd like. I would like to. It looks good. Yeah. Um, Joseph Radio Joe wants to know, how do you like using the SEM compared to the light microscope? Oh, me? me? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think this is a lot cooler because you can see the, the 3D of it all. I think... You can see like the individual, like the lines and all the detail. All the detail, yeah. yeah. So I think I'd probably prefer this one, even though this is kind of a little slower. But I think it's quality over quantity for me. Just happy to be here. Yeah. Well, and I think, um, you know, the difference is uh, a light microscope is basically like looking at things with an x-ray. Yeah. And a scanning electron <coughs> microscope is like looking at things as they actually are because mm -hmm. it's, while it's using electrons, it's showing you the topography or the surface. So it's the way it would look if it were an object in the room with you, whereas a microscope shows you the way it would look if you had x-ray vision and it was in the room with you, right? So mm -hmm. you're seeing through it. Um, whereas for these, we don't see through things. Although you can see through a little bit with the scanning electron microscope because the beam intensity on mine is set at 30, which means the light, the, the sorry, the electron beam is actually like penetrating the sample a little bit, and you can kind of see through it. Would you use the wheel? 
Uh, stuff it up there first, and then, stuff yeah, scroll backwards with the wheel. There you go. Or forward. That's kind of cool. I don't know you can do that. Um, ATU Day. I'm not in D.C. anymore. I used to work at the United States Geological Survey um, for about three, three years. And I was in Reston, Virginia. That's actually where I learned to scuba dive. And then I went on to get my PhD at the University of Nebraska. And then from there, I worked at, yes, I worked at, as a postdoc at Nebraska for a while, and then Arizona for a while, and then the University of Maine for a while. And then I, um, I'm in Indiana. So currently located at Indiana State University, where I'm a full professor, and we're in my lab at Indiana State. So, but um, I'm still a fan of the Washington Capitals and always have been since I started following hockey, so go Caps. Um, I what's that? Ovechek? Ovechkin. Ovechkin. Yeah, that's the right guy. Um, you want to see some tested amoeba plates? Um, I probably have some... I mean, I don't think we have any here, uh, but I have pictures of them that we took. At the time, I didn't know what I was taking a picture of. I was like, what is this? Um, but I, I have it. I have the SCM images, so I can actually send you one. They're kind of boring as a plate. They're just like a, they look like a fish scale, basically. But, because um, we find them disaggregated, you know, the organism is completely disaggregated. But I do also have some, um, we did see some testate amoebas before, and the whole organism skeleton was preserved um, in the samples we were looking at, so you could actually see the organism. In fact, Pacific Plankton was here, um, last fall, she came to visit, and we collected a core together and um, did some field work collecting samples, and then I brought them back to the lab, and we looked at um, one of the samples we had was just filled with testate amoeba. So I probably either still have the material for that, or I have this stub that we used to look at it, and I definitely have images from then. Um, but the testate amoeba are pretty awesome in, uh, in the SCM because the skeletons are agglutinated, as uh, I'm sure you know, and then the um, the spines that stick up off the backs of some of them, they have like kind of a crown of spines, They're really interesting uh, looking organisms. So, uh, how's it going, Fall Machine? Um, Joseph J Radio Joe says uh, that makes sense. I think he means you're oh, me. yeah. liking this better. And um, also we got uh, another person here in the chat, which is Nid for Science, Nid for Sci, and he's another streamer. So I gave him an automatic shout out there um, that came up when he came in the channel. But he's been working on a confocal microscope that he's building. A what? Confocal microscope uses lasers to see. <laughs> cool. Um, like this uses an electron beam. It actually uses lasers. Uh, and then you can name this thing. Did you say it? Uh, it's a star anise. Star anise. S T A U R O N E I S. I don't know what species. Cool. So star anise is good enough. It's probably something like on diatoms of North America, but I don't know which uh, which one. So uh, let me put this into chat so they can see it. Star anise. Um, the funny thing that goes on when you uh, use your phone and you talk to people who are scientists is that my phone autocorrects words to the genus for mm -hmm. diatoms quite frequently. So um, if I start typing staro, it will fill in star anise for, That's for me. <laughs> or if I start typing olico, it'll just fill in <clears throat> olicosyra for me. Uh, it's, it's been trained. Uh, this is a, a command somebody used where oh. uh, we put googly eyes on things, and he wants googly eyes on this. On this? Uh, yeah, so get it into focus for us at this scale, like this wide-angle view. Um, so I think what we just want to do is maybe move it up a little. That's fine. Is that uh, good? Yeah, and then just if you think it's focused or if you have it focused, uh, we'll take a picture like this. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, just go ahead and do what you would normally do. And hit the picture thing. And then uh, what I do for these is uh, we can go over to the OBS. It's the black, yeah. 
and then hang on, let me take control. Go ahead. So I need my glasses. Can't read stuff that far away. Um, I have these googly eyes that are down here in the corner, and we can just move them over <laughs> onto the diatom. Like so, it hasn't fully developed yet. So, yeah, <laughs> is this going to be on the test? Is the Google eyes going to be on the test? Uh, we'll we'll position them a little bit in a second, but then people can type googly into chat with an exclamation point, like a command googly, like this, and it makes the eyes Google around. That's fantastic, isn't it? That is. Uh, so normally what we do is we ask people where do they want the eyes. Uh, I was going to say it might go like one on top. Yeah, one, one on, on each end. end. That's mm -hmm. So normally we either do like uh, Akbar, which is like an eye on each end, yeah. like way out really wide, or the eyes in the middle. Joe says you get to choose. I, I think I want to do the one down, one up. One on one end, one yeah. on the other. And then also, if you want, uh, there's a collection of mustaches that I sometimes will add. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the mustache. We can put a mustache on. So, like a big Yosemite Sam mustache. <laughs> you like that? Our yeah. other choices are, like, we have this one, which is more like a, I don't know, dad mustache? Do you have, and, like, the, the uh, curly Q one? We have like a, one. oh, a French mustache? Yeah. yeah, we have a French mustache for sure. Uh, that's a beard. That's a full beard. Uh, that's a Fu Manchu. Ooh, I might like the Fu Man. And there's a curly, there's a French mustache for it, French curl. I think I want to do the Fu Man. I think that'll Fu Manchu? Good. Yeah. All right. And then uh, this actually takes a little bit of manipulation. So we have to rotate it around because we don't want it to be sideways. No. You got to line it up with whatever it is. So, like, I don't know what that is, maybe 200? Nope, that's the wrong way. Uh, I need it to be like a 90. No. Opposite. 180? No, I need to subtract some from it. So oh. it's like three, oops, sorry. This is the real challenge. <laughs> 320? Ha! I think that's good. I like it. Maybe a little bit more. Let's see. 324. I need to go the other way. 315. Okay. And then... Well, it's scaled wrong, of course. So let's fix the image. Uh, let's see. We'll take this, hit OK, and we'll stick a 2 on the end of that. The things we do for the viewers, you yeah. know, here's the, the things we do. I'm having fun, so. That's all that matters, exactly, really. Yeah. And then now we have the whole field of views, so you can rescale this and put it wherever you like, and then you can grab these and just put them wherever you like. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing hard science, yeah. Hey, Joe, Jim, how's it going? Accurate mustache anatomy <laughs> is really, really critical. That's a nice look. That's funny. That's a real nice look right there. Very, very much Akbard. Uh, you can change the size of them if you grab it by the corner. So if you want the mustache to be, or the eyes to be bigger or smaller. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it, it's especially derpy, of it course, is. Uh, in a positive way. If you line, yeah, line it up with that light bar that runs across the middle there. And then, Perfect. yeah, people can just type googly. Googly. You can type it if you like, if you want to Google the eyes. It just has to be I exclamation do. point googly. And one of them's moving really fast and one's moving very slowly. It just makes them that much more unique. And then usually I ask if somebody will give us a screenshot. So, Joe, if you could uh, maybe grab a screenshot of that for us and stick it in the Discord. Uh, Is that a Discord, too? Oh, yeah, of course. Man. 
we, we do everything around here like professionals. We have, uh, we have a whole set of professional streamer tools. I don't know if this thing is connecting correctly. You got a stream deck too? Yeah, there's a stream deck. Man. What, what am I? Some sort of amateur? Been at this for years. I'd say so. Um, it's, it's having a hard time connecting. Ah, okay. So, like, if people want to go to the Discord, they can do that. It's right there. And I'll give a shout out to our friend Joseph Radio Joe, who uh, asked for the redeem. And um, we also have a, if you wanted to, and you didn't want to have to type it, on my end, there's this button where I can just Google the eyes all I want. So we don't, we don't need to have any kind of, like, typing commands. We can just F it. We just do whatever we want. Uh, we also can do, you want to see what else we can do is... Um, Newt Newt? Is that the strawberry thing from... Uh, Newt Newt makes a sound and it draws, it has a little, watch this corner down here. It's a little water oh. bear who says Newt Newt. I'm, I was way off. We can also, if we wanted to, we could like spin the camera. We have all kinds of fun things we can do. Um, we can make Bob Ross show up in the corner down here, and he says, you know, cool Bob Ross quotes. Uh, Beat the devil out of it. That's right. Exactly. We're we're streaming professionals here. Uh, all right, let's uh, hide the Fu Manchu and the eyes. I feel like Joseph got his uh, his channel points out of that. And uh, Mason did a great job, everybody, with the uh, eye placement, mustache choice, and placement. And uh, we already have a name on this, so we can get back to work. Yep, I'd say so. Very good. All right, let's do it all again. What do we got going on? All right. Uh, Michael Learning really loves your mustache and googly eyes. I think Thank that's your favorite part of my, she comes to my stream, but she's a streamer. And I think that's what most of the streamers come for is the mustache and the googly eyes. Um, I think that's what, uh, the channel's known for mostly for putting mustaches on things. And that's okay. And a little bit of SEM work uh, sometimes makes it into the people. So sneak that image into your thesis. That's a good suggestion, uh, Jason. Uh, you could stick it in there uh, in the actual report that we do, if you'd like. I would love to. Uh, I wouldn't mind. So, um, I'm way ahead of everybody with the professional streamer setup. I don't know if I'm way ahead. I started using the Stream Dex tools. Um, I started first started working with them in basically about two months or three months ago. Um, before that, I was doing everything with just uh, the bot commands. So... Uh, and now I've transitioned almost entirely to using um, the Orin board because it does a lot of the things that I want or have to do automatically. So I don't have to have a moderator um, shout people out. I just have like uh, an array that's linked to people's names so they show up and they talk and if they're in the array it just knows which shout out goes with them and it automatically shouts them out. Um, so I don't have to like do anything, which is good. Oh, we're being raided. What's happening here? We're being raided by Nerduino. And I don't know Nerduino, so hello, Nerduino. They brought in a party of eight people with them. This is getting intense for me. Is it? Yeah, there's a lot of people. I mean, there's not a lot of... We got 33 people. It's a small group, and then we just got eight more or whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Welcome, everybody. Uh, Dishonored, welcome in. We are looking at some diatoms from a project for the student, and the student is Mason. So I'm over here, I'm Diatoms Attack, and um, we're looking at diatoms in a scanning electron <coughs> microscope, and somebody redeemed a channel point award to put googly eyes on the sample. And we always honor those by putting googly eyes, and we let Mason put the googly eyes where he'd like, and then I gave you a free mustache reward, which is another channel point redeem where people can put mustaches on things because I feel like if we put the googly eyes on we might as well put a mustache on it so Just one hand in the other that's right so uh, yes the free mustaches are required so um, 
So Nerduino, welcome in. Um, as I mentioned, we're looking at diatoms, which are a type of algae that have a siliceous cell wall, and they're microscopic. They look like they're invisible. They look like dust to the human eye. And when we put them on a scanning electron microscope, we can actually see them the way that they were meant to be um, viewed uh, with very large, uh, gorgeous features and occasionally with Google eyes and a mustache. So uh, welcome in. Um, I, I don't know Nerduino, I'm not following them, but I will. Um, and it automatically came up with a message about who Nerduino was because that's how we roll around here. It says, please check them out. They are formal performer, professional astronomer and NASA engineer. So you probably already know what a scanning electron microscope is. And they're chatting about the latest breakthroughs in space, science, engineering, and technology. And when they're not chatting, they're making cool builds, tending bees. That sounds amazing. And uh, goofing around, which also sounds amazing. We like to goof around here. And um, I would love to, to like get a beehive that I would beekeep. I love bees. I love bees. I love wood bees. And I have this um, koi pond in my backyard, and we put like uh, lilies in there, and the bees come and eat the lily, you know, the pollen from the lilies. They take it back to their, their hives. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I had the rest of the pieces connecting it? Because the lilies are basically growing in the koi pond, and mm -hmm. then I have the bees that are taking the pollen. I just need the rest of the, the cycle. If I could actually just make honey from that, that would be great. Um, I'd buy it. That's pretty cool. So welcome in Raiders. Um, if this is your first time here, um, I don't always have students running my scanning electron microscope, but today we do. And um, I love having students in as guests as long as they don't mind being on the stream. And I'm just letting, this is the first time Mason's used the scanning electron microscope other than like three years ago. <laughs> three years ago, he used it for about five minutes. So, um, but it's his project. So I feel like it's even better. He gets to take his own pictures and um, and then uh, he's an undergraduate here at Indiana State University. This is my lab, the scanning electron microscope lab. One of three labs he has. Well, two labs, two really. Two labs. Yeah. And, um, and then I usually stream either from the scanning electron microscope or from a light microscope or um, sometimes just from my camera. And I take pictures of birds, the moon. I sometimes stream thunderstorms. So um, a lot of those types of streams, the naturey ones, it's a uh, Symbella, C Y M B E L L A. Symbol, like a symbol, like. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Um, Looks like a banana. Uh, you can, you can say like a banana, but you know they're named after a symbol. So. <laughs> but you're wrong. It's not a banana. I mean, I call them banana shaped. <laughs> um, they're, uh, they these diatoms live attached lifestyles and they usually live on a small stalk attached to rocks or plants. So it's a benthic diatom. Could you imagine uh, being a diatom? I've often imagined myself as a diatom. What would you be? Uh, that I don't know the answer to. I haven't thought about which type of diatom, but usually I think when I'm trying to reconstruct environments, I like to think like a diatom. So I would try to figure out like, how would a diatom approach this? I didn't do the speed right. Oh, okay. Oh, you're just breaking it? Yeah. Um, I mean, hitting the brakes, like, I see what you did. I call that pulling a Mallory. Pulling a Mallory? Yeah. Monday, Mallory, if you're watching. Uh-oh. Oh, mustache. somebody, they actually asked for a specific mustache for this one, though. Which one? They want the one that has the Joker face, so, like, the joke-telling one. The Groucho Marx mustache. Oh, okay. So. You ask, you shall receive. Aha, Nerduino says they're pretty new to beekeeping. They probably, probably makes it more entertaining oh, for other people or for you. Um, and then uh, they're a University of Illinois graduate, so close by. Um, Fighting Illinois. Illinois. Yeah. Uh, what's the name again? This is Symbella. So I will type it into chat for us um, so that you can see it. Symbella. And it should pop up in the corner with an image of Symbella if I did things correctly. Uh, I don't see it happening, so maybe it's not working, but the guide showed up. All right, um, let's look at this. This is uh, oh, that's nice. the little 
Groucho Marx mustache. That's nice. We had a channel redeem. Uh, this is uh, uh, Huggin here, uh, redeemed the Jokioed. Jokio, this is Mustachio, so this is Jokio. Everybody's got an IO. The other one's Biker, Bikerio or something like that. Bikerio? The, the biker mustache, the Fu Manchu. Fu Manchu. Uh, we're not allowed to say Fu Manchu uh, on Twitch, so it's a biker mustache. Why can't you say that? There's a character called Fu Manchu that has like negative connotations, I suppose. Oh. Like from the Marvel comics. Oh. Uh, let's see. We want to rotate it. And there's an astronomer. Yeah, they were an astronomer. So that, that's the way that they said it. I got a question for you, Nerdio. What What do you think Nerd of the Nerduino? Nerduino. I'm sorry. Professional astronomer, former professional astronomer, and a NASA engineer. What do you think of the uh, James Webb Telescope? There's a good question for him. I read about that a little bit. Long way. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, we need this to be... No. It's the challenge. Getting the angle. That looks like it's right. I'm assuming you want it this way. Yeah. And then... You know, we, we'll figure it out once we get the picture collected here. Let's go back to that. Uh, this is the same as that with a two. Yep. Now we gotta put a stash on it. Uh, yeah, so I'm assuming we're gonna just put it here in the middle, but you know, you can figure out the size if you like, if you want it to be like... Could you like Pickle Rick, put it on the... Oh, you want to Pickle Rick it? <laughs> we can Pickle Rick it. Except for now I've got it turned the wrong way. Uh, we want it to be... I agree. I'm excited to see what comes out of that thing. Has it made images for us yet? I think it's still moving. I thought it was getting ready to take pictures. Is that true? Oh my goodness. I did the math in my head and it worked out okay. You want to pickle Rick it? Oh uh, yeah, I kind of do. We're going straight pickle Rick, and then we gotta do the we gotta give them the eyes again because just like with the mustache, I mean it doesn't make any sense if you don't put eyes in there, right? You might need arms. You might need I don't, I don't have an arm command, uh, but I feel like this is pretty good. This is this is pretty good, and then we can still googly that. Uh, I feel like get this out. We'll google it a little bit. That's fantastic. I now it's, it. a, its eyes ended up looking perfectly over at chat. Like, what do you want now? <laughs> That's fantastic. What they what they say about the web telescope? Uh, let's see. I need to catch up with the chat. Uh, Nerdwina says, I think it's going to be an incredible resource for astronomers and give us some really exciting new insights into the early universe. And then uh, <laughs> Adam altogether said, uh, JWST is poggers. Heck yeah. Uh, and Fall Machine agreed. That's what NASA was aiming for, poggers. And uh, El Taco Meat said, this is the funniest thing they've ever seen. I don't know if they mean the Pickle Rick uh, Cymbella, but yeah, it's pretty fun. Um, Nerdwina says their background is in cosmology and early universe, so they're looking forward to see what we can learn from this. Okay, we got this out of the way. We got a Pickle Rick going on. Yeah. So Mason can actually go back to working. What's <laughs> the fun in that? I mean, it's fun. Uh, Hugan said it's the greatest screenshot ever along with the queen ant uh, we did one where there was an ant and then I put googly eyes on the ant uh, for people um, let's see uh, and then yeah Diet Toms is one of the uh, he's like an imaging engineer uh, and he streams here on Twitch and um, let's give a shout out, shout out to our friend Diatoms. Diatoms. Whose real name is Jason. Which is 
among the top two names I heard. In, in naming. I heard about that. Apparently. One of two names uh, <laughs> that rank at the top of his own list, Mason and Jason. So he likes the Asen names. That is the backside of one of those Cimbellas, I think. Is it? Yeah, it's just the, we're looking at it like laying on its side. We don't want that. Have we, oh. done, have we done this one? Uh, we have not. Well, I don't think we have. It might be the uh, star anise. These round ones are pretty cool. I don't know if we have a picture of that round one, but we did take a picture of a round one, didn't we? I think so. Let's zoom in and see if it's the same. Okay. Oh, it's Lindavia Intermedia still. Uh, and that's the internal view of it up there. That one's something different, though, I think. Maybe it's the same. Let's see. No, it's the same thing. I mean, it's cool stuff. <laughs> uh... Is that a spun spicule? Nerdwina says we even have a run we have a running joke uh, on the channel about astronomy astrology confusion. Oh, people who say astrology. I hate astrology. <laughs> I hate it. Um, what's the question? Is this a spun spicule? That's a diatom. Ooh, let's look at it. It's a long, skinny diatom. They, have, they come in many different shapes. It is Anitzia, I believe. This thing that's right here, though, sorry, I don't want to take you away from that. Good. This one, do you recognize that? As it's not a diatom. You might want to zoom in on it, and take a look at it, and then, if you don't get it right, uh, I'm gonna go back to your exam where we looked at these things and take points oh, off. Oh no. <laughs> no. I had two quizzes that I was not especially fond of. Uh, chromaticist? Yep, that's a st uh, chrysophyte stomaticist. See, you got it right. No problem. I did learn. Go, Mason. Uh, you can promote stuff here, Sam. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. El Taco me quoted you as saying, I hate astrology, and then answered with, someone's a Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. All right. I'm a Libra, by the way. Oh, are you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, good to know. I don't know what that means. I was born in October. I mean, I know what that Pretty part much is. What that means. <laughs> I don't know what it means. Like, I don't know what it means what it means. I also have zero clue what it means. Hey, our friend Science is here. Welcome in, Science. Science does uh, ant science. Ant science? Yeah, they're, uh, they look at um, ants. But they do research on ants. They're a, incredible a creatures. PhD uh, that studies ants. And uh, they just got a new job recently. Um, they mostly do genetic stuff on ants, but also some behavioral stuff. And... Um, was that last week we had a stream? We co-streamed with them. They were on my Discord, and um, and we had some ants Shared on the screens. SCM. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I just had him on in his voice. <coughs> oh. Um, but uh, we were looking on the SCM, and then uh, I was asked, just barraging uh, Belint with questions about ants. And What's uh, their favorite ant? I didn't ask him that question. What's your favorite ant? Belint, what's your favorite ant? Uh, it might be the one that's their like, study organism. It's hard to say. Maybe they have something that they prefer that's different. Geo Jim, go Libras. <laughs> go Libras. <laughs> uh, leaf cutter ants. Leaf cutter ants. ants. Sam Shog, my name's Mason. I'm a student of his. Yeah. Mason is going to be working with me for the summer for the. 
um, summer undergraduate research experience, and they're currently in a class with me right now called Lakes and Wetlands, where we study um, lakes and wetlands, like the name suggests. And Diane sounds like fun. For another three days, they're in class with me, because this is the end of our semester. Yeah, I think maybe it is just that the lint hates leaves. That, that makes sense. Um, El Taco Meat says their favorite aunt is Aunt Diane. She's really <laughs> nice and she drinks a little. Uh, does she make cookies? Because I think that's what qualifies somebody as being my favorite aunt. If they send me cookies, top of the list. Aunt uh, on a log. <laughs> that's a... What is that? Raisins on celery with peanut butter? I think that's what that is. Um... I think that's ants on a log. Or is it carrots with peanut butter and I'm raisins? I'm not entirely sure. I think, well, celery has like a... That bed it, 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 yeah, it has know? a channel yeah. for the peanut butter. And then I think they put, they put raisins down the... Oh, apples, okay. I also prefer apples. What kind of apples do you like? Granny Smith? Granny Smith has got to be always in the, in the running. We want something tart, right? I do not have a Twitch channel, Sam Shung. I used to, but... Not anymore. He's on my channel right now, yep. so he is he is my channel. <laughs> oh, they prefer ants on a plane. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think that'd be my preference. Ants on a plane doesn't sound that great. You have, an, you have an image of ants offering tiny cookies to me. The, the reverse of the way ants normally operate, which is come to my picnic and eat my cookies. Um, this is a Nitzia. Nitzia. Yeah, everybody's least favorite diatom. Because they're super hard to identify, usually. Uh, just N-I-T uh, Z-S-C-H I-A Nitzia. It's named after Friedrich Nietzsche. Nietzsche. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, this um, thing to the bottom left of us? No. Yeah, that's a green algae that somehow made it through our processing, which is kind of spectacular considering we put it in nitric acid. We're proud of you. Very proud of you. That is a star astrum. Uh, it just, you can just see the triangle shape to it. So it has like long arms sticking out in three different directions. It's mm -hmm. a star astrum. It's a type of green algae. And then we saw up here this um, chrysophytes. This chrysophytes are a type of golden um, or golden brown algae. Could we see like the opening of it? Yeah. Well, you can see the. I see the little. Yep. The aperture is sort of collar. Has a collar on it. Yeah. You can see that, but. Um, if we had one that was facing upward, we, could see, you could, see we could see right okay. into it, yeah. So, do I need another picture of this one? So it's quite large. <laughs> Taco Meat says, part of the canon in Science and Stream's stream now is that he hates leaves, and it's their supervillain origin story, which I like. That sounds great. Oh, Anna's here. She's another diatomist, and she says she loves Nitzia, so... She's weird like that, you know? She likes things people usually don't like. I think she's just trying to be counterculture. Um, just be you. Yeah, just be you. She likes working with, like, bog samples, and um, she likes all kinds of bog creatures. So That's all right. We like Anna. We don't care about what she likes. Uh, Aunt Nato, one through six, coming to theaters near you. Yeah, that's Aunt Nato. Uh, it's not named after Nietzsche. It's named after uh, Christian Nietzsche. Is this a Sarlacc pit? Yeah. Yeah, there. Uh, that's uh, Lindavia Intermedia again. It's got a little bit of clay in the middle of it. Yes, he was a German zoologist. Anna's here to straighten everybody out. He didn't care anything about his mom or his dreams or any of those other uh, uh, crazy German things. Might be edge of the 
Yeah, you're at the edge of the stub. If you want to look at it, um, are you oh, bored can, with this? I can rotate. Thing? Yeah, you can move to a different one. I didn't think about that. This is slightly further down in the core. There's more stuff here. Yeah. Let's Ooh. see that thing. This right here. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Okay. You're gonna need to focus faster than that. <laughs> Here we go. Oh uh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Keep going. That looks really good. Yeah, it was a reefy. It was right there. There it is. I had it for a second. It's good. You might want to zoom in and focus zoomed in. And it's in Cinema. In Cinema? Yeah, they live in these little... I think it is anyway. Actually, when you zoom out, I'll be able to tell for sure. Is that look good? Yeah. But you can keep zooming in, whatever you want. <laughs> the one time you told me to zoom out, <laughs> I zoom in. <laughs> yeah, it's in Cinema. Right, let's get a picture. Uh, they live in these tube colonies, like, uh, like a long straw that they make out of uh, EPS, out of like sugary stuff and uh do they make it they live the in the colony stuff? yeah they they make it and then they live in inside the tube and they, they make the tube yeah they make the tube and then they live in the tube I uh, terrible. but they live in there like as a whole big um like a colony of them and they travel up and down the little tube like it's a tunnel it's kind of kind of cool that is really cool so i could build my own house out of stuff i make like a hamster tube? Yeah. A giant hamster tube? Uh, I met a plant a few days ago. Its name was Pushkinia. Surprisingly, it was not named after Pushkin, the Russian poet, but Musin Pushkin, the Russian botanist that you'd never heard of. <laughs> Living the tube life. Yeah. This one is, um, the genus is Ensinema. So... You get that for people who want to click on links or look at the picture um, from Diatoms of North America page. There, that's how it's spelled. And you can see that it matches our picture pretty well if you look at the ones that are in that little corner next to Mustachio down there. Mustachio. Yeah. I asked my girlfriend this question one time. I'm going to ask you the same question. Okay. All right. If you could take an ability an animal has, a plant or animal has, what ability would you take while still being a human? Um, any sort of regeneration would be kind of cool. It's like a starfish? Well, they can regenerate limbs, yeah, so that would be cool. Okay. Uh, although I don't want to lose a limb. Um, or, like, algae can regenerate damage that's been done to them. Like the photo, yeah, yeah, photo repair, yeah, right? They that. get damaged by UV light and then they can just kind of regenerate. Um, I think that would be probably the coolest thing. I said photosynthesis for me. Photosynthesis was a good choice. Then you wouldn't have to eat. You could just sit around. Yep. But then you also couldn't spend a lot of time in darkness. You know? Yeah, I'd die. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I didn't even think about that. Feline aloofness. That's a good ability. Hello, Jonathan's Gamecast. That's a good question, Taco Meat. Um, can algae regenerate? What's the question? Can algae regenerate from emotional damage? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know that they feel emotions, but um, it can't be harder than UV light, can it? Um, <laughs> uh, I'm fine regenerating from emotional damage, typically, so... I don't need the plants for that, but, or the algae, but I just but need a little bit of time. Would we change this? We changed the two. Yeah, SP2. Two. And, and then this is Ensinema. C-Y-O-N-E-M-A. Yeah. If you misspell it, it's fine. Mallory just misspells things all the time, and then I 
I'll look through the files and I'll be like, what the heck is this? And then I have to like sound it out like I'm reading something a child wrote. And I'm like, oh, that's what she means. It's like my handwriting. My handwriting's terrible. I mean, if you just type mostly, it doesn't matter, right? That's right. That is right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> no one could aspire to the skill of being aloof like a cat. Yes. Uh, Jonathan game, Jonathan's Gamecast does, uh, he's building a game. He's building a game? Yeah, and, uh, it has some historical aspects to it, so sometimes he does this, like, research about the game on stream, and other times when I show up, he's just flying a plane. Oh, uh, like the flight simulator? Yeah, flight simulator games. I've wanted to try that. Mason plays games. Sometimes, yeah. He's a gamer. Uh, what's your favorite game? My favorite game? Yeah. Right now, it's probably uh, Elden Ring. Elden Ring. Man. I really enjoy Elden Ring right there you now. Go. Lots of people like that. They get a spare sixty dollars to throw around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is this? I think it's a Lindavia. Is this a diatom? That's a diatom. Yeah, it's got covered with junk. Oh, okay. I the one that's was... right above it is actually pretty cool, though. Let's look at it. That's a. Uh, I believe that's Brachycyra. Yeah, that's Brachycyra. This is, uh, if Anna's still here and she's watching, she likes Brachycyra. Let's, let's Zoom take, in, let's get take. in focus. Let's see what it looks like up close. Let's get real personal. Let's, yeah, gotta get into its personal space a little <laughs> bit. And then... Look at that, I tell ya. It looks sharp. It looks really nice. Now you can compose it however much you want closer or farther. I feel like you might want to have the tips in the... Oh. That's a good idea. Right there. That's good. It's like it's in a little blanket. It's going to sleep. It's having a little nap. It's got... It's like a head on a pillow at the top. <laughs> um... Let's see. Uh, maybe algae should try ice cream. Oh. <laughs> for emotional damage. Uh, I think I'd go with hibernation. You love naps. Also, Mallory is epic. We all know Mallory's epic. This is Mallory's last week. She graduates on Saturday. Really? And then gone forever. Maybe she'll come back to visit. But um, Plane C, fun, especially when I forget something critical. Yeah. When you're trying to fly the plane forget to put the landing gear down or something um, they are some of the cutest and this one is very nice she likes your brachycyra thanks worked uh, really hard on that uh, El Taco Meat says for real though I had my life saved by an A-10 so probably that's their favorite plane military man yeah A-10s are awesome and our friend Michael Learning, who here is, is here in the channel, um, I gave her a little shout out before, but she streams mushrooms and tries to identify mushrooms on stream with a microscope. And uh, she does some, some of it she documents like wandering around in the forest and collecting um, the actual samples so you can see where they were collected from. And um, so if you like mushrooms or you want to learn more about mushrooms, um, she's a great resource for that. And uh, she just went on a trip to Scotland. Um, she's from England, so it's not far for her. But um, she went camping. And I don't think they know how to camp, or they don't camp very frequently. So um, she somehow survived this <laughs> and has made it back from the wilds of uh, Scotland. Scotland, yeah. That's so. awesome. You should give her a follow if you're here in the chat and that's something that appeals to you and I've got a button for her as well favorite of the channel oh I got a little mushroom yeah anytime somebody says mushroom a little mushroom will float by it's a secret <laughs> word we have secret words in the channel when you use them uh, things happen yeah I like that is your favorite Mario character Toad my favorite Mario character yeah um Yoshi, probably. Yoshi? That's not a bad choice. 
Yeah. Do you think Yoshi's a girl? I have never really thought about it. I just like the fact that they um, eat things, like with their tongue. Oh, yeah, yeah. The turtles and whatever else. Uh, Anna says her little one is mushroom obsessed. He's taking pictures of every single one. And so far, his favorites are orange jelly mushrooms and woolly bird's nests. Uh, it was only a week, so they managed the, the Scotland trip, yeah. Which one is this one? Um, uh, Brachycyra, B-R-A-C-H-Y-S-I-R-A, Brachycyra. I think that's Brachycyra vitrea, but I don't want to commit to that. Could have uh, been scary, I don't blame you. Pina colada is not a secret word here. <laughs> nice try, Sam. That wasn't one. Fun geese, yeah. Uh, fungi, 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 or fun guy. Which is, which is the way that you say it. Me? Yeah. Uh, fun guy. Fun guy. Yeah. That's a cool one right there. Oh, the one that's right there is also quite cool and large. All right. Wait your turn. <laughs> it... Look at that. Yeah, you can keep zooming in. I'm going to. That sounds like fun. That is fun. That's crazy. Like an hour ago, you didn't know how to use this thing, and look at you now. Flipping dials, man. That's right. It's Mason's SEM now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think this is a uh, Plaquenese. This is what happens. So Mason will probably be working on some, he's working on some ancient diatomites with us this summer, I suspect. I hope. And uh, so the, the plan, at least right now, is to look at some of the Idaho diatomite material and try to characterize some of the diatoms that are there that are 10 million to 6 million years old. So some of the oldest stuff that we've looked at, but also similar to what you could just go to the hardware store and buy in a bag of diatomite the same stuff basically um, but ours actually has uh, rare organisms in it occasionally um, and the stuff that you get in the hardware store not so much so new resume skill yeah for sure you can put on you've used an SEM taking pictures and uh, this is the sort of commitment you know for for students who are looking to uh, to get a good score on their project for the class showed up for the field trip, actually collected a core, sampled the core, Heck yeah. ran a uh, light microscope, and ran a scanning electron microscope. At this point, it hardly matters what you write. <laughs> Man, I was waiting for that. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> you have to write something, though, and, and include your pictures. So You got it. You uh, got it. Sam Shung says they like your confidence. Thank you, Sam Shung. We'll just call him Sam. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 34 viewers where we're sitting. We got another one. And they show up and disappear all the time. That's fantastic. So. I try not to focus on it. Actually, I usually don't even look at it. Later on, I realize, oh, it was like 100 people here. Oops. You got it, Sam. Where, so do I need to go to the Discord to get the mustache one? Uh, I can send it to you. Say I will do that. If, yeah, if I, I can send it to you. You don't need to log into my Discord for that. There should be some pictures of them in the Discord, though. Okay. Hey, El Taco Meat subscribed. 
Thank you for the subscription. Thank you, Taco Meat. You know, the, um, the cool thing about my channel is um, all the money that I get from people who subscribe or who buy things at the, um, the Redbubble store or anything, uh, I just donate back to the lab. So you gave money to, to make sure that um, Mason will be able to work on his project this summer. Isn't that nice? Thank you, Taco Meat. We appreciate you. Uh, I don't. I take it home. I pay taxes on it, and then I just turn it right back over to look at this. Sam's out here giving away gift subscriptions, and he got Jay Scullies. Jay freaking Scullies. She's gonna enjoy that. <laughs> Placanese. P L A, just like it sounds. <laughs> Black and Z O. Oh, C O. Yeah, N E I S. N E I S. Yeah. Next time, I'm going to try and just sound it out and spell it. All right. And I want to see how far off I am. Okay. I think this could be fun. Well, I know what the next one is already, so it should be all right. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to do that big one that's just up yeah. to the right here. Oh, crap. Yeah, that can only be one thing. I know what that one is. It's going to be good up close, though. You're going to like this one. Whoa. Keep zooming in. It's got a lot of striations. It does. I keep throwing words around at people. <laughs> I learned that from icebergs. <laughs> it's already mostly in focus, too. I think you might be able to touch it up a little bit, but... It's looking sharp. Does that look good? Yeah. Alright. Oops. Yeah, it looks good. Are you going to do a close-up one first? Like yeah. this? Yeah, okay, do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, seven. Let's make it work. It's gonna look sharp. That's a good that's a good diatom damage. <clears throat> yeah, Anna likes this one too. I'm gonna use the wheel instead of that because it's gonna not shrink it. There you go. Perfect. Uh let's see. Uh, would have been for Mason, but he's a Twitch Luddite. Oh, he's not a Luddite. He's a Luddite, man. Someone who doesn't use technology. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, That's wrong. I used, a, I used a flash drive today. Diatoms wants to know, do I have Diatom flashcard merchandise? You need a learning aid. Um, you know, I actually did build a, um, oh, somebody used a, a daily Diatom, but it came up with no picture for that one because the pictures messed up for some of them. What was it? Ensignema? No? Oh, it's a... Envicadia. Wow, I don't even know this diatom. That would have been a good one. Um, there is like a flashcard tool that I bought from... Um, uh, from my iPad. And then I programmed it with my own flashcards, and it will go to the Di Diatoms of North America webpage and download every diatom and also all the genera. And then you could use them like flashcards. Um, and I probably still have it somewhere, but you'd have to have the same flashcard program uh, to learn them. I don't have one that's like like a um, standalone software though, so. Um, El Taco Meat wants to know, uh, do I have any 3D models of diatoms that I like? So, um, I have a 3D model of this diatom that's right in front of us. This is the diatom Stephanodiscus Coruscus. And I described this diatom, and I also made this 3D model by using SEM images alone. 
Man. So we used, uh, I took a collection of 80, 70 to 80 SEM images at different angles, and then I used photogrammetry to make this diatom that is accurate because it is made from SEM images and not from anything else. It's not a model in the sense that, like, it's a guess. It's the actual diatom uh, made from SEM images. And then uh, there's just 3D printed, like, two halves, right? So it's the same on both sides. Um, and I can make this uh, model available to you. Um, also, I do have some models that were made using... Um, MATLAB tools or something like that that one of my students has done and they're on Thingiverse um, which is if you do 3D printing you know what that is and um, his name is Joe Mohan and you should be able to like go to Thingiverse and type Joe Mohan and I think he has all of his diatom models on there for free and you can just download them and 3D print them. That's wicked. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, I have them linked in the Twitter page somewhere, but it was like a really long time ago that we did those. So, okay, what's the name? Let me try and spell this. Criticula. Thing. Criticula. Okay. Um, let's see. <laughs> That's not it. <laughs> Cra. You want me to tell you it now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. It's C R A T I C U L A. C R A T Craticula. Like Dracula. Um Oh, uh, El Taco Meat says the reason they ask is that they work for a university as a model maker. Oh, that's cool. Um I mean I have a bunch of diatoms I'd like to make three D models of. I don't have any of the 3D modeling skills. I use 3D modeling. I learned Blender to uh, to do stuff in my wood shop, like make furniture, and I use Blender to prep the model before I of whatever it is I'm going to make, so I can get estimates on how much wood I want to use and that kind of thing. Um, I'm going to show you something that I want you to do with this before we start, which is um, up here in this field that says rotate. We can actually turn it, and we want to turn this one basically backwards because this is plus direction and this is minus direction mm -hmm. and it's just a little under rotated so it's probably like 205 degrees um, 215 degrees okay um, and I'm just doing that so that it goes from corner to corner mm -hmm. so that you can make it a little bit bigger cool because right? if it's the other way you're only getting like kind of cockeyed yeah now it looks like a, that's how professionals take pictures in the SCM right there. You might need to refocus it a little bit, so. Um, yeah, so I can send out some links for those. I used to have them on my Twitter page and I just have them like stuffed on a cloud server somewhere, like a Google cloud server. So I can just give you the link to that either in the Discord um, if you want, if you don't like Discord or don't use Discord, um, um, I can just put up put up something, uh, a link somewhere in the about section here on the web page, for example, and you can just get it, get it there. Um, it's pretty, but a little boring. Okay. Uh, hey, Glorgana, <laughs> how have you been? Sorry, I, uh, I'm a little behind in chat, and Mason's running the scanning electron microscope. I don't know how long you've been lurking here, Glorgana. Uh, Glorgana's another streamer. Here on Twitch, uh, my channel is just filled with streamers all the time because I do stuff that streamers like to watch, um, I guess. And Glorgana is another science-based streamer. She does taxonomy, or not taxonomy, sorry, uh, taxidermy. So she actually like um, rebuilds things Ooh, that's that have been hit by cars. Me. Oh goodness! And uh, uh, remakes birds from you know the skeletons, and that's cool. Um, uh, she also does other things. She does some, some art and uh, she does some puzzles with people and she was reading novels for people for a little while from science fiction. Um, but the taxidermy thing is pretty unique to what she does. And she always warns people ahead of time whether it's going to be gross or not. So if you're squeamish about like 
seeing what a snake looks like with no skin. That. Um, you know. Uh, you'll know in advance. So, the model's cool. <laughs> it interrupted your lurking, sorry. <laughs> I didn't know you hadn't seen that before, but I can give you guys links to the, the models, uh, both this one, which is the species that I described, and then a lot of the other ones that Joe Mohan did are actually species that he and I described together from the fossil record from Africa. So there's a bunch of stuff there that we worked on that he modeled that's either a species I described or one that he and I described together. And then there's some other stuff that he just modeled because he thought it was fun. Um, so. Would I like it cast in silicone? I would like it however you want to make it for me. That sounds amazing. Uh, any any 3D models of diatoms you want to make or if you want to um, uh, build something for us, just let me know, Taco Meat. Um, I'd love that. So um, you want to be my hero, you can do that. Uh, can also be used as a, yes, in gym hockey. Yes, we could use it as a puck potentially, yeah. <laughs> What did he write? For, they want to know how you spelled Criticula. I put it right, right there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I tried really hard. <laughs> it's difficult. Invecadia. Invecadia. That's what I said. I feel like that's how I pronounced it. Invecadia? Invecadia. How would you... I don't know. You can't talk, but... Anna, you keep pr cr criticizing my pronunciation, and I'm going to force you to talk on discord again with me here in the channel so uh let's see i do a lot of 3d modeling and printing but most of your job is making clinical skills teaching aids for veterinarian students uh like suture pads for surgery fake organs and bones it sounds super cool all taco meat um like a really cool interesting job so uh, Diatoms wants to know, does the SEM capture depth information when you scan? Um, it will tell you the depth of focus. So, um, you know, right now, when uh, you can't see it because I have it hidden under a little panel um, and also under the bubble where Mason and I are, but um, on the right side, basically underneath us in the picture, um, on the SEM, there's uh, information and it will tell me the depth of focus. So when he zooms out, it'll say like 70 micron depth of focus. It tells us how thick the depth of focus is. Um, and it will also tell us um, the working distance, the magnification, and what is the complete field of view. So when I do 3D modeling, what I did was um, I can just tell it to rotate. You've seen me do that, where I rotate the stage. I can also tilt the stage, and so I can tell it I want to tilt the stage 10 degrees, and then I want to rotate it 10 degrees at a time. I can just go in and rotate it. I have to refocus it every time. Um, but uh, it keeps whatever it is in the field of view, which is actually something that's unique about this SEM um, over other types of SEMs. And a lot of people have told me, oh, we tried to do this in the SEM. It was basically impossible to make a 3D model out of stuff. And I was like, it's not impossible. You just need the right SEM. And when we were looking at SEMs to try to buy them for this, because I wrote a, a grant that got this SEM funded um, to the university, um, the, they were showcasing the different SEMs. And as soon as I saw this feature, I immediately recognized what I could do with it. And I was like, I want this SEM. Because um, I knew that we would be able to make three-dimensional models using this sort of technique if we could keep the sample in the field of view and just rotate it and tilt it. And um, it sometimes takes it a little out of the field of view, but it's so good at recalculating where we are um, on the stage that it actually keeps it in the, the, the frame. And then I can just tell it, well, put it back at the magnification that's like 30,000 times magnification and by typing 30,000 into the magnification field, and it'll just put us right back at the same height. And then the depth of focus will be the same, and I can just uh, move it around to get the composition right and focus it. So. This is a uh, another Nitzia. You me, oh, well, it's a different type, but you can go ahead and take a picture of it. You want me to rotate it? I do want you to rotate it. Um, you just need to add like forty degrees to it, so, so two fifty-five, um, something like that. Might be more like two sixty-five. Oh, that's pretty good. 
That's not bad. It probably could like be a little bit more. What are you thinking? 57? 260. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Um, so it does capture some depth information, but it's depth of focus, not actually like how thick something is. Um, does your university have an SEM2? Oh, you're asking the other person, not me, I'm assuming, because this is my university's only SEM. <laughs> I, I'm the person who has the lab, but it belongs to the university. I see, you wrote Criticula is how it's spelled, but you wrote it in my account, so I said it. Criticula is not my favorite word. Uh, a TEM. No, we don't have a TEM. Uh, we don't, I, I would be happy to have a TEM, but I generally don't need one of those for... Um, for what I do. Hey, CQ Wisdom is back. I uh, finally got your shower cleaned up after all your exercising. Uh, you mean you can see a naked snack on Twitch and it's called Science? Count you in. Yeah, you just need to go visit our friend Glorgana um, and you can look at all the naked snacks that she puts on there. Skinless, naked snacks. And mostly not gross. Uh, will show up when it's not gross or it'll say mostly gross when it is so uh she still has one in the freezer <laughs> um <laughs> anna says criticula is now her favorite word and she spelled it the way you spelled it so uh we also got a I cheer tried. a cheer right there 500 bits from diet toms and thank you diet toms a hype train is closed somehow. So thank you for uh, for throwing bits at us. That's very cool. Um, and Parker Zilla just subscribed with their Prime account. So that's probably why we got close to a hype train. Um, welcome in, Parker. How are you been? Um, oh, that was for Mason. Yeah, thank you. He said that was the, the bits are for you. So, well, they go to you no matter what. That so comes. thank you. Is his name Tom? His name is Jason, remember? Oh, He's Jason, uh, I'm Jason sorry. Mason. I'm sorry, Jason. Everybody gets confused because he listed his name as Diet Tom, so now everybody thinks his name is Tom. You do have the best name. Uh, and then Anna wants to know if that's really a Nitzia. I think it's a Nitzia. I guess it could be Hansia. I didn't look closely at it. It looks like Fonz's comb. Yeah, it does look a little bit like a comb. It's not Nitzia. Okay. Hey, welcome in. Portuguese. They cheered 100 bits and we did get a hype train. Look at this. The scam train that, uh, that Twitch wants you to send your money to people. So we, we were hyping in. We're at level one. Uh, you read Nitzi every time, yeah. Well, it's it's similar. Can you zoom in on it? I just want to take a look at it. Yeah. Oh, after you, yeah, label it. <laughs> Is it Nitzi? I don't know. Anna says it's not. I'll put a question mark after. It could be Triblinella, I suppose. Uh, or it could be Nitzia or Hansia, but you can't put a question mark because it's Windows. Oh. It doesn't handle punctuation like that. Can I put a star? Nope. It doesn't like punctuation, like periods and dashes. Dots. Underscores. We're having fun this afternoon here in the channel. Do you usually not have fun? Uh, I always have fun. <laughs> I think it's Tribbly Noah. Tribbly Noah? Yeah. All right. It's fine. You can leave it as Nitzia question mark and I'll rename it. Gotcha. All right, cool. Tribbly Noah is separated from Nitzia by the fact that it has a undulating vowel face. So the face has sort of a wave form in it. Wicked. Fun. 
Find us something new, Mason. I'm trying. I'm trying really hard. Actually, this is a good one up here as well. This one this and one? this one. That one looks like fun. That's a pile of fun right there. This I've one? seen this one on... Um, when I was on Diet Tom's stream, Diet Tom's stream, uh, like, last week he had this Diet Tom, I think, on his stream, and I just blurted out the name of it, because I know this one all the way to Species. Look at that. With a glance. Not fantastic. Zoom in really closely, like, right in here. Right in here? Yeah. Get, like, right up in it. All up in it. All up in it. As close as you can get. And now focus it. Too far? It's sensitive. That's it right there. Somewhere around there. Can you slow that down? Just for a second? So you can see these are the openings that are on the outside of it. And they're like little C shapes. They're smiling. Like little smile. It's a little smiley face. You ever seen? It's happy. Oh, this one's angry though. That one's happy. You ever seen Bao? Like the, the short from Disney? No. It's like an eight minute thing. It almost made me cry, truthfully. But <laughs> that's exactly what these look Those like. Those little faces? <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's like a little dumpling and he has like a little face a like A dumpling that. face. It's so cute, but it almost made me cry. So I'm not going to watch it. You can't take a picture of it because it might make you cry. Correct. Okay. You want me to take a picture of this? Uh, you can do whatever you like. I was just wanted to show you. They have really intricate uh, pores. I'll take the a picture. pores on them. So. It sounded like I said trichinella. No, it's not the trichinella. It's triblianella. Yeah. Anna, Anna's corrected it. Uh, someone here has not experienced the pioneering days of PC use and tries to use symbols in the file names. Yes. <laughs> uh, El Taco Meat says, I'm married to a parasitologist and that name was familiar. Yes. Trichinella is like what you get from eating turkey? No? What is it? Trichinella? Is that trichinella? Uh, Triblinella is the diatom. Yeah, with a Y. And uh, Taco Meat says, Bao is both delicious and a cute movie. It is. It is really cute. Those little faces are kind of cute, though. Right there? They're like Buddha faces. Those happy little Buddha faces. What's that? Uh, that is the Echantheria. Those are marine organisms that have calcium sulfate skeletons. Mm. And they don't preserve in the fossil record because the sulfate, is it calcium sulfate? I think it's calcium sulfate. Um, Cucolithophore? That is a cucolithophore, yeah. Dr. Brick and Dr. Winter both love those. Mostly Dr. Winter. That's his photo, actually. Mm -hmm. oh, that's, that's, a, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I took okay. some of his stuff. He said he didn't care. He's a great guy. This is a... Uh, a dinoflagellate in the picture below us. A marine dinoflagellate. Those things are scary. They can be, actually. They can be dangerous. They're what make up red tides for the most part. Mm -hmm. Not that one, I don't think. They can make you sick. That you? is dinophysis, I think. That's a, a foram. It's a globigerinid of some type. I have some marine stuff on here because other people use the SCM besides me. And I just take their images and do whatever I want with them because it's my SEM. Um, but uh, this I was imaging with a student, and that I think is probably one of Amos's photos. I haven't actually tried to, I haven't put any of Amos's photos and colorized them in like a year or so because I can't tell. They have a whole bunch of things that they think are new species, and mm -hmm. I don't want to like put it out there. Put, put it out there. Yeah. He said he didn't care, but I care, so... You can get in trouble for that, can't you? No. Oh. I was listening to a podcast about paleontology, and they were talking about that. How a journal posted something. <laughs> well, those guys are a little bit more um, worried about people um, finding it? something and stealing it, whereas uh, most of the microscopic world, like, nobody wants to go through the work of naming it, because there's so Fair many enough. of them that are unnamed, so... 
I think Anna still has like five or six species that we're working on together to describe. Haven't seen any sort of uh, progress on those though. So, and then I have a bunch of Aphrosimbella I should be working on finishing up the descriptions. I think I've been labeling these wrong. Put O1 on some of them. Starnies. No, those are from the first one. Those are okay. I just want to make sure. They're all S twos. What was that one? Uh, the one that we're looking at is um, Epithemia gibba, is its full name. Epithemia, Epithemia gibba, gibba. Two bees. Two bees. I've done five living samples already, and I'm going to have lunch. Okay. At least those samples were not stored in the fridge for ages like your last batch. <laughs> Put you off your lunch for a while. Yeah, I guess it probably would. The, uh... This species, um, Epithemia gibba, is pretty common. And Epithemia, especially this group, which used to be called Ropolodia, but it's now Epithemia, um have an, a relationship with endosymbiotic um, cyanobacteria. They capture them and then use them for nitrogen fixation. So we, we know what nitrogen fixation is, right? Mm -hmm. And they will, um, they will use it to have the cyanobacteria provide them with nitrogen. And they provide some resources to the cyanobacteria. Um, probably some sugars and a little living space for them and uh, they have a symbiotic relationship it's called endosymbiotic because it's inside the actual happens inside the actual diatom so they somehow pull them inside and then uh, share resources live together that's nice they're friends that's very nice well they're friends in the sense that one's imprisoned inside the other <laughs> sounds like marriage <laughs> maybe <laughs> sounds like marriage uh, <laughs> yes, and the symbiosis is for the win. <laughs> Michael. I'd say I've got a couple more in me that I'll probably split. Okay. So I'm hungry. Well, that's fine. Uh, mostly my plan for today was to try to take some pictures for you. So look what happened. Here I am. Here I am. All I had to do was read chat at people. Uh, marriage should never be a prison. As a survivor, I can assure you it's supposed to be better than that. As a survivor? I guess that they survived oh, marriage. Oh, marriage? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's not. Mine's del my marriage is delightful. So, I mean... I mean, my mom has married, like, four different guys, so... Maybe I just have a bad role model. Probably. That's all right. Um, Great woman. Let's see. Like, I didn't get married to Carlin until... We'd been together for, like, 13 years at that point. So the marriage was just like, oh, yeah, let's do that. We'd been together for a really long time, so... You know... She knew what she was getting into. I'll get back and married to the game. That's right. <laughs> married to the game? <laughs> However, bad marriage, good divorce, and wait for the sequel. There you go. That's the way to handle it. This little guy that's underneath us here, that's a Ropolodia, an uh, epithemia from... Uh, Lake Malawi. I don't think that one's described yet. That's one of those that I think is a new species that nobody knows. Where is it but me? Yeah. Uh, Lake, oh, it was in the... Oh, in there. It was the green wow. thing in the I previous didn't... image. It's hiding. And what's in there now is a Cosinodiscus. That's a marine diatom. I got one more in me, and then Chick-fil-A is calling my name. Chick-fil-A? I forgot you haven't eaten yet. This is what happens also when I get on the SCM. 
I forget to eat lunch. Yeah, well, I'm it wouldn't... notorious for it. In fact, the there's another streamer who made a song about my channel. Um, that they 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 have a song called Diatoms Attack. That's that's fantastic. Which is you know my name in the channel. Mm -hmm. And you can <coughs> listen to the song here. Our, my friend Rebecca uh, was watching streams, and her partner was Joseph Radio Joe, who was here earlier. Um, so this is uh, from 10. ten. Yeah. What was this? A little bit farther down. It looks like it's also a little bit more trashy with respect to clay. <laughs> oh, but so it's probably not a good one to look at. Uh, maybe. Zoom out. Maybe there's something on the margins that's a little bit cleaner. Sometimes the middle has like a lot of clay. Mm, oh, there's this? like a sororella right there. This right here? Yeah. It's a big one. Yeah. It's a big old sororella. Labriel, probably got some clay on it though but still you don't have any of these in your collection of images so I wish we could find the the one that we took pictures of the real big one that I had on the, the light microscope um, El Taco meat has thrown down they said that uh, raising canes is better than chick-fil-a I've never had raising canes so I can't I can't um no contest yeah I don't have a I don't have an opinion on that I want to try raising canes though I don't think I've eaten it. I haven't eaten it raising canes before. We had one in Lincoln when I lived there in Nebraska, so I definitely could have eaten there. But um, Ooh, I don't like that. What's that? You need to zoom in so we can see it. There's been so much crap on it. That's the way I feel about all the time when I'm looking at stuff in the SEM. I'm like, man, I wish this didn't have so much junk all over it. Yeah. But it's okay. Just has to be in focus, and then you got the, you know, an outline of it at least. Probably you don't want a close up. You probably just want to have the distant shot because it's got junk on it. We don't want junk. We don't want to see it so much. You know, we don't want a close up of junk. It can table. be there as long as we don't have to look at it. Um. Yeah, plus it's a great song. She wrote a great song about diatoms, and uh, and you need to rotate it more. This is the skill you develop over time. Maybe a little bit farther. Another 10 degrees, maybe. 35. There you go. Perfect. This, uh, figuring out how far to rotate in which way. That's uh, like 80% of my job at this point. <laughs> um, and then also our friend Asymmetric Souls here in the channel. We have a lot of musician friends that hang out with us in the channel as well, because I also hang out a lot in Twitch streams where people are playing music. And um, this is our, our friend Asymmetric Soul. They play like um, kind of trippy guitar loops and... Um, uh, original songs and stuff. Really cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Carl Jr. in Chipotle in New Zealand. Seek says they've had Raising Cane's and Chick-fil-A. And you have a, a verdict for us, Seek, about which one is the better fast food restaurant that's chicken-based? Popeye's. I don't even think Popeye's is in the equation. Yeah, I, I don't think Popeye's is... KFC. KFC's old news. KFC and Popeye's, that's like um, turnpike food. You know, like if you're driving across the country. And like a gas station. Gas, gas station, station KFC. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. But you're desperate for some chicken in a bucket. That's where you go. I tell you what, though. Whenever I was a little, I used to get their popcorn chicken. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. You know what I like is... Um, Boston Market. They don't have those around here either, but I really like Boston Market. They have like rotisserie chicken. They don't do like the fried stuff because I'm old and fat. <laughs> and um, they also have like real food, like mashed potatoes and, and mm -hmm. um, gravy and all that jazz. Corn and uh, cornbread. Like real food. I like cornbread. Real food. Cornbread's good. 
Awesome. Uh, okay. You know, it's getting late in the stream and we just start talking about fast food the whole time. So, uh, Jonathan's Gamecast says, we have so few food places here in New Zealand. They only recently got Carl's Jr. and Chipotle. You're not messing much on Carl's Jr., in my opinion. But I'm never had Chipotle. Uh, straight Chipotle. throwdown. Doesn't like Carl's Jr. <laughs> Doesn't care how big their burgers are. Uh, neither one meets Seek's chicken standards. Crispy Crunchy is their top pick. But that. they're very... Crispy, we had that here we for do. a while. I think they don't, they're not in our... They're not? They used to be in the student center, but they took it out and they put in some sort of hamburger sliders thing. I think they moved it. I think it's across the way now. Oh, it's still around? I think so. Okay. Uh, and then Diet Tom's is here saying that it has to be Taco Bell. So, And Seek says Church's Chicken is also a winner. And Jollibee. So I've been in places that have had Church's Chicken and uh, Crispy Crunchy we used to have in our actual like student center here. Apparently they're still around. And I think, I'm not really sure. Uh, I've never been to a Jollibee. So. Is it three or ten? Ten. And this is Surrella. Whoa. Yeah. That's S U R I R E L L A. S U R I R E L L A? Yeah. I think I had one of those in the light microscope. Maybe. Uh, Diet Tom's is, uh, Jason says that crispy gordita crunch is real food. Is that Taco Bell? Taco Bell, yeah. I tell you what, their nacho fries are good. He, he's an advocate for Taco Bell as the best food on the planet. Oh. So. I don't know. I don't, I don't know one. either. <laughs> I feel like I'd rather have something from home, to be honest. Yes, I agree. All right. All right. It's all yours. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hey, that was fantastic. And I will send these photos to you along with the picture of the googly eyes and mustache okay. from, from the Discord post. And uh, and then I look forward to seeing your final project. Is it? You want me to make a slideshow or paper? Whatever you want. Okay, I'll, I'll figure no it out. No fixed format. Bye, y'all. All right, this was fun. Uh, we'll probably see Mason again later. In a few weeks, he'll be back for the show program, so. Yes, sir. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Very much. All right. Nice dra driving, Mason. Yeah, he did a good job and uh, did a great job leading us around today. And the nice part about it is uh, it was stuff I was going to do anyway, so I'd have to do it, um, which works out well. All right. Um, so I think we have enough pictures of this stuff for Mason. I just want to really quickly look at this other sample. I stuffed one in here from, uh, from a different pit, a different... Um, has a lot of the same stuff. Here's that same Cerarello we were just looking at. Long skinny guy. And I just wanted to see if there was stuff in these samples. Criticula or navicula. No, it's criticula. So a lot of the same species. These are things that we'll probably look at with uh, Tyler tomorrow. That's a pinularia. These look like Olicocyra. I think it's Olicocyra. Uh, so there are diatoms here. That's good to know. We can image some of those later. And then I have one other sample that I just wanted to glance at really quickly. Maybe take a few pictures from. Uh, I want to see how well this turned out. I rinsed this thing like a bunch of times and it still has clay in it. It's just basically no avoiding it. I think that just they're large pieces, like clumps of clay particles and stuff. Some diatoms visible, but a lot of junk in the sample.
Mm -hmm. Oh, here's something cool. Big Cerella. All right. Um, let's jump over to this. Let's see. Where was I? Where did we start? Yeah, this is a sample from Deming Park that we looked at. And this is a sample from the Wabash River. I just want to look a little bit more around in the Wabash River and see if we can find something good to image. And this is a Melisira. Just a real simple Melisira variance, I think. Or it's Ellerbeckia, maybe. I think it's Melisira, though. Yeah. Melisira. We'll take a quick picture of this. Maybe we'll do one more picture after this one. Um, something else from the Wabash River here. And then maybe we'll call it a day for streaming from the SCM. There's a New Zealand burger joint in Indianapolis you were going to recommend, except for it shut down in 2020. Oh, well, that sucks. What's the name of it? <laughs> Can we get some diatoms doing yoga stretches? Uh, I don't know if we if I know any yoga stretching diatoms. Um, yeah, a lot of places shut down during the 2020. Um, COVID sort of wrecked a lot of places, yeah. Uh, what's a generic advice you could give to someone considering dropping out of university? If it's not for you, go ahead and drop out. Um, you know, what are you there for, I guess is the question. Um, you know, I, I, I guess I need to know why they're considering dropping from universities because their grades are terrible or is it because they're not learning something they find useful or is it because um, something else like they, you know, um, I think that's the critical point is that it should be catered to the person. So I don't really know what their burger fuel. Huh. Um, I don't know what the, what their considerations are, but I mean, it's not for everybody. So you dropped out after your second year, uh, you'll get your BA when you're ready. Yeah. I'm on the something else bucket. Well, I mean, uh, university is only useful to the point where you can actually do something with it. Um, you know, the problem I experience for the most of my students is that they, they can't afford going to school because it's expensive. And then, um, so they work while they're in school, right? Because you got to have a job to pay for things. And then their job becomes so overwhelming, like they don't have time to study that they do poorly in school. And then as a result, yeah, they're going through their classes, but they're not learning what they need to learn. And so I feel like they're just treading ground, right? Because they're not going to graduate with a degree that's useful. And even if they did, they would have poor grades to show for it. So I think you need to, um, you need to make decisions that are based on what makes the most sense for you. And then, um, you know, like I said, it has to, it has to have a value. I find a lot of students also don't, uh, they're, they're in school for the wrong reason. They're in school because somebody told them they needed to go to school in order to make money, which is, you know, not necessarily true. Um, you know, I think that there's a, a trade-off that happens where you delay how much money you're making and, um, 
you know, you'll make more money immediately if you come out of school and, or if you don't go to, if you come out of high school and go right into work, you'll probably make more money immediately. And then maybe like 12 years down the road, it'll start to reverse itself and you'll make more money, you know, having been a student um, as a professional. I, for me, the thing that separates it is like, I couldn't do what I wanted to do if I don't have the right schooling. Um, if you can do what you like doing and you don't need to go to school anymore, then, you know, you're just wasting time. Don't do that. Um, you know, it, it should be geared towards what your, your objectives are and you should always look at it that way. So, you know, if you're going to spin your wheels and not make any progress, then, you know, that's not a good, it's not a good value for your money. Um, And I, I definitely think there's a lot of students who are at the university who are just trying to like check boxes, like I take courses not because they're interested in them or because they're curious about it, but because they're, they're trying to get a degree, but they don't really recognize that if you just get a mediocre degree um, and you don't really care about what you're learning and you didn't learn anything, uh, and it's not the education part that you're there for, it's probably not helping you. Um, you, you know, you may not get a very good job. You probably won't get very good recommendations. Um, you know, you want to be doing something that you're really enthusiastic about or that you're interested in. And I think that's the most important part. So um, for me, I went to school as an undergrad. Um, I became interested in geology. And then I never dropped out of school, but I had to work my way through school. So it was very difficult. Um, for me, pay for all of my bills and take classes at the same time. And, um, you know, a lot of students have that as a challenge. Um, and so um, I was very focused all the time about how much money it was costing me and, um, and try to do my best at it. And, and then I realized that if I wanted to continue to do science, you know, the kind of science where I can ask questions that I want to ask, I needed a master's degree for that. And so um, after a year, I went, a year of just working, went back and did my master's degree. And then after I finished my master's degree, um, I went to work at the USGS for three years. So I took some time off in between my master's and my PhD. I realized what I wanted to do, was very focused and went back and got my PhD. So, you know, that's, um, I guess that's my recommendation is that come in with an objective, you know, come away with it with a purpose that has meaning for you to do what you want to do. And, um, and not because somebody told you you needed to check some boxes in order to get more money. I don't, I don't think that's a good plan. Um, you, you want your, you know, for me, it's it's about having a career where I can do something that I enjoy doing. Um, I don't want a job where I just punch a clock and get paid a lot of money. I mean, I could do that, um, but I want to have something that I'm, you know, I'm not moving paper from one side of the desk to another or um, shuffling, you know, things around on a shelf or trying to sell things to people. I made a commitment pretty early on after working my way into college and through college that I didn't want to have to have a job where I handled other people's money, like literally like their cash. So I didn't want to have any job where people had to pay me directly money. And I didn't want to have any job where I had to handle food because I found that people are really rude when they either are paying you money <laughs> or you're bringing them food. And I didn't want to be involved with that. So, uh, for me, those are things I wanted to avoid, uh, rude people who, uh, <laughs> who didn't want to give me money for things that they were buying and, um, and didn't like food that they had ordered. So, uh, but I think I'm fortunate I have a job that I like. I like to teach people, I like mentoring, and uh, and I like science, I like the parts of science that I do. So um, my job doesn't feel like work most of the time. I don't get up and go, oh, I gotta go to work. 
I usually go, oh, I've got these things that I have to do at work, but, um, you know, which can be stressful, but I like what I do. And um, for me, I would rather like what I do and get paid a little bit less money than to not like what I do and get paid more money because uh, money's not that important to me. So I'd rather be happy. Um, I'd rather feel like I was accomplishing something with what I was doing. So that's, you know, that's, but that's my decisions. Um, everybody's got their own and I don't judge them for what they want to do. You could use the other route and be just as happy. You could have a job where you're just, you know, trading stocks or something, make a lot of money and then do what you want with the money. I feel like that's also a valid approach. Um, I just don't have a lot of things I feel like I desperately need money for, so. There's things I would like to have money for, but, you know, I'm not, not in a position where it matters that much usually. I'd rather have happiness. All right, oof, that's gonna look good. These are, this is a stephanodiscus, a very small stephanodiscus. This is an internal view. So in the scanning electron microscope, we have both inside and outside views of diatoms. These things that you see on the sides are called mantle photoportula. They're a little portal that goes all the way through to the outside world. And um, on um, diatom stream, the other diatoms, the one that was here in the channel, or is here in the channel, um, we saw some diatoms that had uh, like chitinous fibrils sticking out from the actual valve. So it looked like there was like a, a, a set of threads sticking out from the valve. And he was like, what are those? And I said, oh, they make these things to sort of like baffle their descent. And they make them by sort of spewing them out these little mantophotoportula, which are these little windows. So they squeeze uh, material out these and they make kind of a parachute for themselves. And um, that's what they do with these. These are basically used to slow their descent through the water column. These only occur in planktic diatoms. They don't occur in benthic diatoms. And um, the reason for that is probably because they're mostly used for slowing their descent through the water column, um, which is pretty cool. Somebody was asking me about whether or not diatoms can um, change their buoyancy and this is one of the ways that they can kind of change their buoyancy which is basically to make themselves uh, have more surface area for their volume which will basically cause them to have more friction in the water and descent more slowly um, to keep them afloat more easily and also if there's an uh, upwelling current it moves them back up into the sun which is where they want to be so the rest of the time they're just falling through the water column. Um, and then this is a nice view of the inside of the diatom. If I slow the beam down, you can see these little bumps are the areoli. In Stephanodiscus, they're bundled into little packages with uh, costi between them. And then there's a little mouth-like object over here, which is the other, um, it's not a piece of dirt that's actually part of the diatom, called the rimoportula, which is the other primary feature that um, centric diatoms have in abundance. So um, I think I can go ahead and take this picture. It'll be one of two and we'll just do one more after this one I think if I can find another good diatom. Um, and I just wanted to try to catch up. Um, all right, uh, associates uh, degree or something like that is what an A is I think. Uh, I was going to get an MS, but then I realized I could start making money. Yeah, right away, yeah. Um, as a former teacher and a current university employee, facts. <laughs> okay. Uh, Associates of Arts, yeah. Uh, very unfortunate how much class stratification there is in higher education. It's so hard to get a PhD without parental support, yeah. And here at um, Indiana State, there's actually a lot of students who are... Um, what they call first generation. They make a big deal about the fact that we have all these first generation students, the students who have never gone to school or their parents never finished with a degree. And um, like I never even told them at the university this, but I'm first generation. My, my dad and my mom don't have college degrees, so I know exactly how hard it is um, for those students. So 
Uh, that red. Oh, the red around me. The sphere. Yeah. Uh, I didn't show this to Mason, but the the um, it doesn't run super well on this computer. But we can uh, we can uh, bounce around in our little bubble. I just have to do this, and then the bubble just rolls around and bounces around for a little while. Um, What would it take for the U.S. to flip a switch and make all education free? Uh, I think it would take Bernie Sanders being elected, which didn't happen. So, um, <laughs> the end to the corporate ruling class would probably help as well. Healthcare, I don't know. People are really stubborn about healthcare here. Um, uh, you're going back. You're going to. Oh, you're back. You're going to chill here while you stream uh, and work on Streamlabs and stream. That's a good plan. Um, I always try to do a little bit to upgrade or improve my stream uh, every every time. Uh, I don't always accomplish it every time, but I like to try to um, upgrade some aspect of it. And I noticed that uh, Diet Toms is also doing that same thing. Um, the crown-shaped Diet Tom that you're thinking of is Stephanodiscus. It's this one. Stephanodiscus. It's the one that we have actually in the field of view. Um, we're looking at the inside of it, so the spines are pointed downward because um, the spines are on the outside. So, um, yeah, and I noticed that also Diet Toms is slowly upgrading their stream every time, working on both the mechanical side and uh, and trying to get uh, um, other aspects functional. Yeah, everything is run through, almost everything in the stream is run through Lioran board um, Takumi. Um, in fact, you'll notice when people come in who are uh, streamers and I have their name in my little database that it, it automatically shouts them out. When we got raided, it automatically shouts out the raiders. All oh, that's Leoran board. The shaking is Leoran board. The color changes are Leoran board. Um, I like it because basically I don't have to manage anything on my side and I often don't have moderators in the channel or I have them, but they're busy with something else. So it keeps me from having to constantly shout people out. Um, you know, if I could uh, make it easier for myself, because a lot of times, basically, my focus is on the microscope or the scanning electron microscope, and so uh, it makes it challenging. And the Orin board requires a little bit of programming, but basically, um, uh, once I have it in place, then it runs pretty well. It's fairly stable. Um, it's Leoran board too, so everything that you see is uh, something that I programmed, not something that you can download. But they do have a lot of nice like tools for people who just want to download stuff and use it. Um, and then I occasionally in my Discord will post some of the code that I use, so if people are interested in that, um, it's I think it's hidden in the um, the back part. Here's that same diatom, but this is the um, the external view. So uh, Diatoms was asking about one with the crown. You can see this has a crown. The spines are broken in a few places, but this is stuff in a discus as well. You can see that there's sets of holes separated by costi. At the end of each costi is a spine, and that is a characteristic of the genus stuff in a discus. The spines are sometimes subtended by a mantle photoportula. So here, here, here's one, here's one, here's a mantle photoportula by itself, the spine's missing. Here's another one with the spine and the mantle photoportula. Here's another one. Here's one. So you can see these little knobs that are behind it. That's the external expression of that opening we saw on the inside. And one of these is probably also a rimoportula, but I don't know which one it's, you know, also would be in the same relative position as the um, spines that we were looking at. So I'm going to zoom in real quick and try to get something in here slightly better focus. This is good. And so this is the Stephanodiscus. Um, the name means a uh, crown disc. So, you know, kind of gets that model for you pretty easily. You can see the costi are these thickened parts here where there's no holes and they radiate out from the center. Pretty distinct. Okay, we'll do this. Actually, we'll do speed eight. Uh, auto contrast and brightness to let it fix itself and then this one just has a little bit of junk on it but otherwise 
it's a not not so bad uh, image and the daily diatoms a little bit messed up today shadow doesn't have the picture you're a big fan of Leoran, yeah make tons of dumb stuff for it it's fun software to play with and I just need a little bit of coding background and then it's pretty easy to manage so um, you know, I could do more, but I also feel like I don't want it to get too busy that people are distracted by it all the time. I just want to be enough that, um, you know, people can be entertained <laughs> and I can uh, be doing something else and they can just make redeems and I don't have to fight with it. So, um, yeah, so I sometimes stream into Discord how I do things in Leoran board as well. So if people are interested in that, um, you can join the Discord. It's not it's a pretty low pressure place. Um, I don't post a ton in there, but um, pictures from the stream, uh, SEM images from the stream, pictures that I colorize, uh, bird pictures that I take in my birding stream that I do um, on the other side of these. This is looking pretty sharp. Um, at speed eight, you can see the difference in the speeds right here in terms of how granular the image is. Um, so it's gonna look nice and, and clean and um, I'm going to take that picture. That is a 10 minute scan, so it's going to take a little while for it to get through it. And while it's doing that, it's a 404 page, yeah. Hey, go farmer, how's it going? You joined. Okay, cool, Taco. If you have things you want to um, showcase about Leoran Board, or if you want, if you have some, and you say you're writing little code pieces, but if you have links to it um, that you want to share, uh, let me know. And also, um, I'll post the, um, the diatom uh, models in some place on there. I'll drop a folder link and maybe pin it somewhere so people can get access to it. So uh, if you're on there already, because I know you were interested in that. Um, so we have this image cooking here that's a um, stephanodiscus. It's kind of chaotic. I mean, whatever. Uh, somebody might enjoy it. You never know. Um, I try to keep mine just just a little bit chaotic, uh, mostly under control so that people aren't, um, like I said, sort of like a calm place here. So um, it's Wednesday, right? And four o'clock. Um, We're good. Sanofite, I forgot to ask, did you get, um, uh, did you make it to affiliate yet? So I know you're close and uh, I didn't see a comment about it, but um, I don't know what part you're missing. So it's usually, it's like average of three streamers or something. It's a pretty small average that's required. Um, Okay, that sounds cool. Yeah, I would definitely want one. Um, and I can, you know, I can send a link to Joe's page with some of those other uh, SEM images as well. So that would be good. Um, I guess we'll find out. Sign of fight's got a. Uh, Okay, you just need to stream one more day. Okay, cool. As long as you have the average viewers. I was going to say we could raid over there, um, but I don't want to constantly raid the same person, um, you know, just to kind of spread it around a little bit. As long as you're good. Uh, I'd like to help, but I don't want to just constantly, uh, you know, raid one guy. Um, let's see. Um, I do want to go through some shout outs here. And I would like to probably, we are gonna raid out. Um, it looks like paleontologist is also just starting, but I, for the same reason, I don't wanna constantly uh, raid the same people. So, and no problem. Um, let's see about our friend call sign Scarecrow. It seems like maybe they're streaming. They just, they've been in for an hour. So 
let's give them a raid. Uh, I like to sort of switch it up. We'll do a little bit of art sometimes, a little bit of science sometimes. Um, Call Sign Scarecrow is a music streamer friend, and um, they do all kinds of cool music. And they also are very supportive of the music community. And I really like that when I see another streamer who shows up to other people's streams and hangs out. And, um, and so I want to uh, give them all the support I can. Also, I really like their, uh, their music style. So not for everybody, but um, definitely people can come along. I think that would be great. We'll give them a little raid. And um, I will, in the meantime, while we're watching this thing develop, there, it was kind of messed up for a second. Um, we can do some uh, some more shout outs. So I've been in the channel talking today a lot with Cyanophyte. Um, please give them a follow. And um, our friend Diet Toms has also been hanging out with us all day. Um, very cool. I also like to hang out in both of their streams as much as I can. Um, so please give them a follow if you haven't already. And uh, they both do microscope streaming. Um, so definitely something you should check out if you like what you see here. Um, I want to say thank you to the people who gave us raids. I'm going to do that by just switching over to our little ending stream screen, um, which should populate, hopefully, with uh, credits for people. But we got um, raided today by um, our friend Seek Ye Wisdom, and Seek came back to hang out with us. And um, we got subscribers Parker Zilla came back with a prime. Uh, Jay Scully's got a, a free gift certificate from uh, from Samsung and uh, El Taco Meat. So thanks for the subs, 